Anthony Sakari. We back at it like a crack at it. Better let them bruise in the dome. In this wicked industry. Shine a light. Oh. They done let them bruise in the dough. Oh, shit. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Uh, uh. They done let them bruise in the dough. He bruised. 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 They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Look. Joe Biden need to free dark load. The hell is wrong with you? No Alamolek, but I got perfect vision in the dark. I'm a lexicon, I'm a megalodon, all my verses ripping them apart. Mosaic law with the church is missing, it's the worst religion from the start. start. In my soul where the word is written, out of circumcision of the heart. Yeah. I'm rocking my fringes. I'm in Seattle, rocking like Hendrix. No industry gimmicks, you rappers are finished, I'm taking the door off the hinges. Throwing stones like you're sinless till you get the finish. You should have repented the minute this proof is endless. They loving the image. Sign out of what happened to Kim. What happened to Kim? I keep my pencil on point, no sharpener. Used to weigh pounds of troll, I lay down the floor like carpenters. Ooh. She causing division in the sisterhood. I'm marking on. I'm preparing the way for the harvester. I'm a harbinger. Cops hop out, we bail on them. Leviticus, I like my fish with scales on them. Ask Chief Ephraim, he could vouch. We be putting in the work while you sitting on the couch. Camp haters quiet as a mouse. Yeah, I ready. Shout out to my brother, Austin Trout. Just as a reminder, if there's doubt, I wear every single fringe, even when I'm in the house. Yeah. They in Pentecost, in the synagogue, I've been a boss, every minute cost me, and I got the dinner sauce, they call me Pace Picante, they put me from my plate, and I ate the odds. Get all your truth music at DeaconSakari.com. That's nine albums. We even got a couple free for y'all. Support the cause, y'all. Children's Bibles with black and brown images. All on DeaconSakari.com. Even your head wraps. Stay dipped. Stay brewed dripping. All right? DeaconSakari.com. And sign up to the Patreon. Sign up to patreon.com slash Deacon Sakari to get the exclusive YouTube videos that YouTube will flag and also early releases as well. And let them bruise in the dome. This wicked industry shine a light. 1592 on the shores of West Africa. We migrated from Israel, but that's where they captured us. Pop purse, popping mollies and putting powder in your nostrils. We be in the trenches, needles under benches. We be giving them the gospel. I'm the Aki. Twelve Sakari members with me. We be moving like apostles. True, some is dead traps, hair wraps, but just a little thought. The church don't even know the truth. They can even tell you an Israelite. Yeah, and the Arabs selling you all the switches and the malt liquor or the Ishmaelites. Ishmaelite. You're showing niggas slave ships and the Bible still won't get it right. Until the time's out, then the niggas got to find out with them missiles like one second all oh, praises y'all all oh, praises First and foremost, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, and we do so by Hashem Mashiach Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of His mighty, only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, real name of Yahweh Shai, in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. We will momentarily be joined by minister mike holloway also known as elder mike who will be having a discussion a pertinent one on his israel bloodline israel still the chosen people of god the covenant people of god or is the church has the church replaced israel has the promises now and blessings gone to the multi-ethnic church and God has now cast off his people. You understand? 
Matter of fact, real quick. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Mike, check, Mike, check. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, D? All right, brother Mike. You want to give a quick introduction because this is probably going to be a lengthy discussion. Uh, I have a lot of scriptures and questions, and I want to allow you the same opportunity and the same allotted time to ask me as well and, and present your scriptures and questions as well. So uh, I'll let you give an introduction to my audience. I'm sure your people know you. <laughs> Absolutely. I am Elder Mike, your urban church, uh, associate pastor, Power, Hope and Grace Bible Church in Detroit. We are uh, an apologist for the Christian faith, uh, standing on the word of God, standing on truth. I'm an educator. Right. And, and my job is to educate our culture for Christ. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who don't seek true biblical education, too many YouTube scholars, uh, and I'm not knocking that, you know, get what you can get. But with the help of the Lord, I try to help people come to a higher understanding of what the scriptures are saying. So I'm ready. I'm ready, man. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, looking for a respectful dialogue. And uh, if you will, you know, it's probably best if we just bounce, you know what I'm saying? In other words, uh, you know, you say something, I may have a question off of your question after I answer it. You know what I'm saying? Let's just make it conversational in that way. Um, you know, uh, you know, it don't, it's not no long discourse of questions from you then long discourse. Of, I've been and forgot some of the things I was going to ask you off of your question. So let's just make it conversational. You know what I'm okay, saying? So that's what I'll do. I got a series of, I got a series of, of questions predicated on scriptures. Uh, cool. But what I will, what I'll do is, is I, I'll give you time to elaborate and expound and maybe answer with the scripture as long as we could try to keep it precise and concise oh, so, yeah. that, so that I could, because we've been having these questions and I appreciate you having the, the testicular fortitude, for lack of better words, to come on here and, and talk to us because we can't pay for a Christian apologist to come on here and talk to us. I got to run yeah. the green. I got to run to Berean. I got to run over to every other <laughs> channel, you know. <laughs> so all praises. Let's get started. My first question is, um, uh, when Christ comes back, is it uh, is it judgment day? Like people going to hell? That, that happens when he comes back? Uh, well, so remember I said I'm an educator, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, let me say this, right? So within Christianity, which is the position I'm representing today, there, there are a couple views, right? There, there is a view where when the Lord comes back, it is at that time he is going to judge and set all things to rights. However, the more popular view, especially within uh, our Western Christian churches, is that he will come back and set up his millennial kingdom. Uh, so some people view it that way. Some people view it somewhat differently. Uh, and so what's your view? Well, well, my view is I kind of lean towards the view that it is I'm not opposed to him establishing his literal kingdom when he comes back. We can dis we can discuss whether it's a literal 1000 years or not. You know, it could it could potentially be uh, uh, symbolic. Right. Uh, when it comes to apocalyptic literature, when it comes to books like Revelations, Ezekiel, Daniel and things like that. The prophets are writing apocalyptically and they're speaking uh, oftentimes using uh, analogies, mysteries and things that may not have a wooden literal fulfillment. And so what we have to learn to do, especially when we read the prophets, and I know we're going to get into it, but uh, what we got to learn to do is to read the prophets in the light of what the apostles were given through progressive revelation. So that's going to be important. So again, I'm not opposed to a, a literal kingdom, you know, but we're going to get into what that kingdom is all about. So, okay. So when Christ comes back, he sets up a kingdom. When he comes back before the thousand year period, 
are people getting judged and going to hell. So it's only believers in the kingdom during that time, during his arrival. Well, well, no, with that view, I, no. So there could potentially be people, and I and I use these terms purposely. Like you may hear me say, I'm just explaining this because you're going to hear me say it a lot. Potentially, uh, or I think, you know, or I lean towards this or that. Prophecy is always obscure until fulfillment. That's just the bottom line, right? There are some things about prophecy that really won't come to light until they're being fulfilled, right? That all of our study, <laughs> isn't going to be able to to uh, dissect. Well, so, Mike, I, I feel like that's a cop out that I've heard you use so many times because there's a prophecy God. that says we will go into slavery for 70 years and we in Babylon and we went in slavery for 70 years. That was not obscure. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, it was. You want to know why? I mean, I'm about to bless you now because now now I got to help you. Remember the prophecy that God gave was that they would go into uh, uh, Babylon for 70 years. And so Daniel being in captivity, when the 70 years was almost up, he started praying because he had read Jeremiah's letter, right? He read the prophecy. And so he's praying, he's repenting for the nation, he's repenting for his people, and he's waiting on the restoration of God. But then God spoke to him, remember? He says, no, not 70, but 70 times seven. But when you read in Jeremiah, it, you, you won't see that 70 times seven. So what do we have there? We have the exact picture of what I'm saying. It's obscure until fulfillment. In, okay, in Isaiah, Jeremiah, even the prophet Daniel thought that was going to be 70 literal years. But okay. when, when Daniel actually heard from God, he said, no, 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 70 times seven. Okay, but generally, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel... The Lord told them, you're going into slavery to Babylon. Was that obscure? No, 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 no. I didn't say. Well, see, here's what obscure simply means that it's not clear or we don't have all the detail. It, does, it doesn't mean that, that we can't understand anything about it. So when I say obscure, I don't mean we sitting in the dark. No, something that's obscure, you see, you see it. Right. You you see the picture, you see the form, you see some truths about it, but the fullness of it won't be revealed until fulfillment. That's gotcha. it. Listen, that's the nature of prophecy. OK, you gotcha. Want. Now, now going back to the kingdom, uh, I, I just want to clear yes or no answer. If you can, if you can, if not, you can say uh, it's not that clear cut. I'm not going to pigeonhole you or force you to answer right. to, my, to my liking. Cool. But when Christ comes, that's judgment day. Everybody who's existing or alive, those are believers or no, will there not be necessarily believers in his. So there'll be non-believers, not members that are not of the church will be in Christ's kingdom. Yeah, potentially. OK, potentially. OK, so if so, if there's no chosen people, then we so will there be an ethnic hierarchy or racial stratification in the kingdom of heaven? Okay, that's a great question right there. <laughs> yes, sir. waiting on that one. Ethnic hierarchy, no. Right? Now, rewards, yes. Right? He that is faithful over that which is least, God said, I will make you ruler of much or many. And so there could potentially be where you get more rewards, you know, you, you got, you got making it in the kingdom deep, but if you make what would be it, some <laughs> of the rewards, what would be, what would be some of the rewards? Well, no, well, what we understand in scripture, and I can only say what scripture says, what we understand in scripture is uh, we can look in the book of revelation and we can read the promises given to the seven churches, right? Uh, I will cause to sit with me on my throne, even as I'm set down with my father on his throne. You know, I will cause to eat up yes. the fruit of the tree of life. I will well, cause since you all. Quoted it, since you quoted it, let's, because I already, this is, this is why I'm asking the yeah. question, because yeah, yeah, if yeah, there's yeah. no chosen people, why is in Revelation 2 and 26, there's one people who we believe to be the Israelites, predicated on other yeah. verse yes, getting sir. power over the nation so if you're getting power over the nations is that uh -huh. not an ethnic hierarchy or racial stratification uh, no not at all look at the verse bro he that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end i will give him power over the nation it doesn't say the israelites 
I will give power over the nation. It says he that overcomes. That doesn't mean every Israelite is going to overcome. Matter of fact, I think you would even agree with me that every Israelite is not going to overcome. So whoever that and if you understand the uh, the the perimeter of those seven churches within that mail route, starting with Ephesus, Myrna, uh, uh, Pergamon, right, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea, you understand that predominantly, bro, predominantly those churches were Gentile. So okay, so the Gentiles are going to have power. What is it? What is demonstrate how it would look like to have power over the other nations? If that's not dominance and hierarchy, then we are just clearly no. being uh, what I would say we're, we're, we're light footing or gaslighting. No. We're, this is red letter, verse 27. No. Well, before we get to verse 27, can you just demonstrate how the multi ethnic church will have power over other nations, other nations, i.e., Chinese, Japanese, Dirty D's, Lick at These, East Indians? Africans, so on and so forth. Can you demonstrate? Because right now the church has power over the other nations right now. So how would that look like in the kingdom? Of Africa, if you will. <laughs> so he said right now the church got power over the nations. All right. Check this out. So power over the nations is just that they the church is the reigning or, you know, the, because notice what who's he talking to right here in the verse? Right. Let me see this. What, what? Let me just pull that up real quick so I can I can say this right. What verse is that? I see the, the, the numbers, but I don't. Is that chapter two or three? Chapter two. All right. Watch this here. Now watch this. Chapter two. Nah, nah. Mike, now this going to be good. So, Hold on. Let me. Mike, you got to be able to dance. You got to be a good dancing partner. Because I'm nah, going to say this. I'm going to dance. I dance to the scriptures. Come on, let me. I know, but you're gonna say that. But but here's here's why it's a struggle. Here's why it's a struggle. You gotta let. You know, I haven't said nothing yet. It's a struggle. You're just trying to prove who it is that's having power over the nation. You're trying to pre, but but that's what you ask. Hold on, D. Hold on, D. You ask me, will there be? ethnic hierarchy you didn't say just hierarchy i and i explain i say i explained the hierarchy as rewards based okay so gotcha, gotcha. so so now now watch this watch this so so if we go here now just see starting at verse number 18 if you can drop back to 18 please notice what it says and unto the angel of the church, the ecclesia in Thyatira, right? So, so don't get mad at the church for believing that these promises are to the church. Oh, okay, got you, Mike. So, so you're unto saying, the you're church of Thyatira, it, right? How does this? It, it doesn't say prove? unto the nation. It yeah. doesn't say unto my ethnic people. It doesn't say unto the Israelites. It says unto the church Mike, in Thyatira. How, how does this prove that the church in Thyatira is not Israelites? Uh, that verse doesn't itself, but I can if you, I'll share my screen and help okay. you see. Hold let, on, let me finish. This let me finish. A, with, let me I this was was all Mike, type of historical Mike, sources to Mike show Mike. you that this was a Gentile region. A Gentile region. We are scattered into all nations. So just because it's a Gentile region, that does not make them uh, non-Israelites, Mike. You should know that. Well, well, let well, me, let me say, say that. It, it don't, it don't, does it say Israelites? No, it doesn't. Okay, thank you. But we no understand that the, the church, the body of Christ, as we're going to prove, with the duration of this broadcast, that mm -hmm. is Israelites who's having power over the other nations. Verse 27. I want to know if you teach, teach this at your church. And he, the, the ones that overcome and get power over the nations, which the church already has, and he <laughs> shall rule them with an iron rod as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. So the church, the multi-ethnic church, who has already took the whole, every melanated country in the world in slavery, they get to do this again in the kingdom of heaven, rule them with the rod of iron and beat the hell out of them. As the Bible says, that's what you teach your Wait, church. See, Deke, slow down. Now, see, see, this is why you got to listen real carefully. Verse 27, read that first two words. And he, who's the he? Thank you. It. Hold on. And he, that's not you, Deke. You not he. Who is That's the he? Christ. Okay, then he. who's the he? 
Who's the he in verse 26? Hold on, hold on, hold on for a sec. He that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. Now, I agree with you. I agree with you that the we who are in the he, Christ, are a part of the he. So I'll give you that, right? I'll give you that. And we will rule with Christ. Remember, because this is a reigning with Christ, right? So reigning with him with a rod of iron. Now, you again, you got to understand apocalyptic language, right? Ruling them with a rod of iron and as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers even as I received of my father. Notice that. Who is the I received of my father? It's talking about Christ. Right. So we, we, with the, he, Christ, will rule the nations with the <laughs> rod of iron, and they shall be broken to shivers. Again, okay. this is apocalyptic language. Right, Mike, just, just answer this question. Do you teach your church that the multi-ethnic church in the kingdom of heaven is going to have power over the nations with Christ and beat the hell out of them with Christ? Do you teach that? Wait. No, because it don't say that. It, where, where is beat the... Okay, here we know, go. I don't, I don't okay. use foul language. Okay, let me read this. Well, hell's, yeah, in, yeah. The Bible. hell's in the Bible. So it says... Uh -huh. with yeah. iron you rod, ain't using it like the Bible uses it, though. With the rod of iron, and as the vessels of a potter shall they... Who's the they? The nations that are being ruled over shall oh. be broken to shivers. Do you agree with the text? I agree with the text. I disagree with the bad understanding. You Before think that... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Who what this is... Hold on. The nations. It doesn't uh, say... Hold on. So are you trying to tell me this means that you're going to take a ride and you're going to beat a person until he his body scatters all over the place? You really think... See, that's, this is why you got to understand culture. Culture. Mm -hmm. This is a idiom for dominance over in rulership. That's what okay. this is. In other words, what this text is saying, again, this is an idiom. This isn't to be taken and literally as if you're going to beat a person and his head going to fly one way, his arms going to fly another way. That's ridiculous. Y'all need to stop teaching that. That's bad, yeah. false doctrine. What okay. it means is that the power within those nations shall be diminished. They shall be destroyed in terms of their power and their rule. That's why he starts out by saying, we shall rule them with the rod of iron, right? Okay. And the nations will be destroyed, right? Mike, not so Mike, much you're going to beat people till their arms fly off. Stop it, man. This, Mike, it's Mike. not going to be no poltergeist going Mike, on. Listen, listen, Mike. You are overpowering the conversation. So I would, like to, I would like to get my line of questions out so that you can be on the hot seat and then you get the same time to put me on the hot seat because it's already not going well. So can we just do it? Stick to stick Deep. to how, how I formatted it, please. Deep. And then I'll give didn't you I, did not I didn't ask you a question. I answer I was answering. What's what's okay. the problem? Okay, I so let me, let me just go through let me just go through my line of questions and then I'll let you drill me. Pause. Uh so my argument right now is if there's no chosen people, then we shouldn't see any racial <laughs> stratification or ethnic hierarchy in the kingdom of heaven. Let me repeat that again. My argument is if there's no chosen people then we shouldn't see any racial stratification or ethnic hierarchy in the kingdom of heaven. So I got a question that I asked you on Berean TV. This is just a quick question. You already know Romans 11 and 28. Can a Gentile, because if there's no chosen people, then we shouldn't see any benefits or rights or privileges that Israel gets that no other nation gets. You understand what I'm saying, Mike? Oh, I understand clearly. I'm going to wait till you finish the question so I can answer. Okay, so... so I want you to answer that if you can. In the kingdom of heaven, will Israelites, bloodline Israelites, get any privileges, perks, or rights, or benefits that only they get and the other nations don't get? No. Now, let me let me completely answer, though. Let me give you a complete answer. Okay, go ahead. You, you, you said, Mike, if there's no chosen people, I never said there's not. I'm chosen. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, Blood, oh. Bloodline Israel is not chosen. Okay. Me, uh, me, no, 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 no. No, I didn't say that either because Paul was a bloodline Israelite and he was chosen. Peter was a bloodline Israelite and he's chosen. So, so let's, I just want to be clear so people can understand my position so we can, we can argue the right, the right stuff. Ain't no sense in mm -hmm. us arguing stuff. Neither one of us believe. So here's what I believe. I believe that the people of God, God's people, made up of both Jew and Gentile, Israelite and Gentiles, right? So, so 
These people are now one in Christ. Every blood Israelite who believes in Christ and every Gentile who believes in Christ, okay. they, we are one in okay. Christ. And okay. so gotcha. I'm, gotcha. and we are the chosen of God to gotcha. inherit every promise and every blessing in the text. Okay. I got you. I got you. So you're saying that the chosen people of God are basically the multi-ethnic church church in the which bloodline Israelites are a part of that, right? I'll, I'll say yes. I wouldn't say it like that, but yeah, okay. for, for, for so, lack of a better term. Yeah. Well, I'm arguing against that. And my first line of questions in scriptures is going to show that if that's not true, because there are privileges, rights, and benefits that bloodline Israel gets that non-Israelites don't get. And here's one. Right. I asked you this on Berean TV. Yes. Can a Gentile be an enemy of the gospel and still be the election? Yes or no? No. Okay. Can an Israelite be an enemy of the gospel and still be of the election? No. Now, okay. can I explain? Can I explain that, please? Let me read this first, and then I'll let you rebuttal. Okay. Romans right. eleven twenty eight. As concerning the gospel, Israelites, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. As Paul okay. is saying, they are still of the election. They are still the chosen people, even though they are enemy of the gospel, because God is not a promise and covenant breaker. Now you can respond. Go ahead. Thank you. Now, first, the text didn't say everything you said after the text. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election. See, the election establishes that there's a people of God the Israelites will be included in the people of God. It, it says touching the election. It doesn't say that every last Israelite is elect because you even would agree that I think you would agree. I heard one Israelite say it don't matter. Even Judas going to be in the kingdom, you know, and I, that's just nonsense. But I think you would even agree with me that not every Israelite is going to be saved. Okay. And so this is why it says, hold on. But touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sake. What Paul is doing strategically is reminding the Roman church of the Abrahamic promise. And yes, God promised to preserve a remnant of Israelites who uh, will be uh, saved. Mike, so Mike, and, and Mike. hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm almost there. I tried to say precise. Go, hold on, one more sec, one more sec. I'm, and it's not even long. Your question okay. was longer than this. Hold on, just do me one favor. Jump back to verse one. I'm gonna share my screen in a minute because yep, jump Romans, back. Romans 11 and one. Yep, yep. Jump back I'm, to verse I'm on, one I'm right quick. I'm on the parallel. I'm on the parallel, but I'll- Nope, I'll, nope, I'll, no problem. I can, uh, I can, I can pull, pull up my screen because- I may have to get that in a minute anyway. Go ahead. All right. All right. Romans, watch this. Romans 11 and 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Right? Wait, He's talking. Wait, you're saying, oh, oh my, my bad. Oh, Go ahead. Yeah. Right? He's talking about Israelites. Mm. For And watch what Paul said. To validate that God hadn't cast away the Israelites, Paul says, for I am an Israelite. So, so we're not cast away. In other words, why you, you moving so fast? I wasn't done. You going back? Mike, God, you, you said you, God, said, you, you running. Said you Hold to, on, bro. Mike, you you're going there. You not let me answer, Doc. You not let me answer. You gotta let me let me break this down, man. This is important. I'm an educator. I'm trying Mike, to bless the people. Listen, listen, Hold listen. on. This Watch is going, this. This is unfortunately going to have to be cut short if you can't just respect. That you have to make what? it as precise and concise so that I can. Okay, get okay. I'll tell you what. Do me a favor. Do me a favor right now, so we can establish this right now. How much time do I have to answer? I know you. You're so long winded with this. With Stop this. it. You no, no. That, that no. That's the wind of God coming against. That's all that. Show me how. Show me. Tell me how much. Give me a time. Give me. A, can I get? Can I get? Can I get sixty seconds? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Okay. I'm. A, I'm gonna put my timer on, right? And so I got now. Now, if it's a twofold question, that's that's double that sixty seconds. So if you ask me one question, give me all I need sixty seconds, and you know, minus the time it's gonna take to pull up the verse, and let me respond. All right, no problem. Uh, now let's start the clock. 
Paul says, I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Can you scroll up a little bit? We can read verse three. Right? Three. <laughs> I'm sorry, the rest of verse two. Go down a little bit. Uh, right. You said verse two or three? Right here, two right here. I'm sorry, I said three. Right? What ye not, what the scripture says of Elias, how he makes intercession to God against Israel, saying, go to verse three, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and digged down thine altars, and I alone am left and seek my life. Right. You don't even have to go to the rest. I'll tell you. But God says, I preserved the remnant. There are seven thousand who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. What Paul is reminding the church of Rome is that there's a remnant of Israelites that will be saved. And he's included in that remnant because he says, I also am an Israelite. So. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Here's the problem, though, Mike. And I want to move okay. on. And, and I, there's some things that you might not get to rebuttal. Do a Do a response video to it. We got to keep moving. You're no going. I'm just giving my sister. You're you're going to believing Israelites to say, oh, those are the election. But the Bible is saying even the enemies of the gospel who are not believing Israelites are still of the election. That doesn't mean they're going to be saved, Mike. That's a convolution. There well, is I agree a with chosen that. People, can I speak? There is a chosen people who will always be God's chosen people, even though they have to receive judgment. All right. So let me move on to the next question. Uh, this is Jeremiah chapter 30, uh, verse 11. So if the Gentiles are equal to Israelites in the kingdom of heaven, I want to know how to deal with this. Jeremiah 30 and 11, for I am with you. Who's the you here, Mike? His people, his covenant people. Is it, Israel, is it ethnic Israelites? It's the believing ethnic Israelites at this time, yes. Oh, okay, so that was a hat. show you. For I am with you to save you, declares the Lord. I will, though I make a full end of all nations. Right. So he's making a full end of all nations among whom I have scattered you. So uh -huh. believing Israelites and unbelieving Israelites were scattered, right, Mike? Yes. Okay. But of you, I will not make a full end. So That's right. this is another perk and privilege. We're going to keep going and I'll let you respond to this. So this is another perk and privilege where he's destroying all nations, but he's not destroying Israel. I will discipline you in measure, and I will by no means leave you unpunished. I'm going to skip to verse 18. So just so you could respond adequately or sufficiently, it's going to be Jeremiah 30, 11, verses, uh, and also verse 18 to 21. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will restore the fortunes of the tent of Jacob. So do you agree that he's going to restore all the former glory and fortunes to ethnic Israel, according to this text? Uh, he's going to restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob, yes. Okay, and have compassion on his dwellings. Where's his dwellings at? Uh, I'll show you that when I respond. Okay, the city shall be rebuilt on its now, mount. That's the second question. All right, go ahead. <laughs> the city shall be rebuilt. I just want you to clearly see what it's saying. I want, uh, well, when you explain it, Mike, I want you to do it line by line. The city shall be rebuilt. Meaning this is an actual city that was wasted. And the palace, third temple top, shall stand where it used to be. Out of them shall come songs and thanksgiving and the voices of those who celebrate. I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will make them honored and they shall not be small. Their children shall be as, their, as they were of old and their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all who oppress them. We want to know when this happened, Mike. Their prince shall be one of themselves, meaning the Israelites will not be in captivity or in their land having a ruler such as the Persians, Greeks, Romans, etc. Their ruler shall come from out of, midst, uh, out of their midst, and I will make him draw near, and he shall approach me, for who would dare of himself to approach me, declares the Lord. And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. So, can you please address how, if there's some type of egalitarian society in the kingdom of heaven, how he's destroying all nations, but sparing Israel, and then he's restoring their fortunes, giving them their land that was wasted, and he's punishing all those who oppressed him. Uh, I'll give you a couple minutes to answer that, because I know it was Thank long. you. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. I was about to say, <laughs> Doc. Okay. So, so, first, you said, ega, you know, egalitarian is 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 where they say women 
you know, as equal with me. And so you know, this, I wasn't, uh, I, I don't know, maybe you used the wrong term when you said egalitarian uh, when you were asking equal, the question. Equal society. Say it again. An equal society. Okay. Well, yeah, there will certainly be an equal society uh, in the sense that every born again believer. Can you share my screen? Because I can probably answer you quicker. I got you. I can I can navigate real quick here. So first, it starts right here. Right. Genesis chapter number 12, where God told Abraham that he was going to make him a great nation. I will bless those that bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, this was before there was a Jacob. This was before there was an Israel. This was before there was a 12 tribe. And it was in Abraham, all the families of the earth would be blessed. So all we got to do is jump up to Galatians chapter number uh, three, verse number eight. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles or the nations, the ethnos by faith. So the scripture saw that God was going to justify these same Gentiles who you want to make your slaves. God said he was going to justify them. And he said this before there was a 12 tribes. He's going to justify all nations. How? By faith. He preached the gospel to Abraham. What is the gospel? This was the gospel. In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believe in Abraham. So as you read the text in Isaiah that is talking about the covenant people of Israel, you have to understand those verses in light of the understanding that the apostles added to that because the prophets looked into the things that were to come, not under fully understanding it all, right? But the apostles, some things were not revealed in previous ages, but have now been revealed through God's new covenant apostles and prophets. And, and that's why we have, hence we have the new covenant, right? Sometimes you all get stuck in the old stuck at Sinai. And so when you go back to what you were talking about in the book of Isaiah, right, where it talks about the nations and it talks about ruling, it's talking about not just Israelites, anybody, <laughs> anybody, what does the text say here? Those who are of faith. Now, Paul could have easily said the Israelites are blessed with believe in Abraham. No, those who are of faith. Now, watch what else it goes on to say, right? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the spirit. How? Because you're an ethnic Israelite. No. Through faith. Okay. Last verse. Last verse. I'm sorry. I'll be too ser serious. Last verse right here. Right? Watch this. Last verse. For you are all one in Christ. You is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. And if you are in Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay. Uh, Doc. Now, somebody just texted me and said, your moderator's blocking all the Christians. Man, that ain't right. I got all these people. Aren't you, simul aren't you simulcasting on your end? No, no, I couldn't do it. No, I'm okay. not. Okay, okay, okay. Tell them so, they blocking so, all the Christians, man. No, they no, no. Let me, let me know. They were being rude. So, moderators, I thought, I thought, only reason I told them to block them and time them out, because I thought they were on your page watching them. So, no, I couldn't. I moderators, couldn't moderators, since he can't simulcast, don't block them so much, but the the spamming, the 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 condescending, the insults. Uh, I don't want to hear none of that fake Israelites and oh, you're stuck on the, on the law. Yes, what, we keep God's laws. what about Christians are pagans? What about truth bombs? You said Christians, so so they can call me pagan and come well, on, dude. I'm let's, not looking at every comment, Mike. Well, I'm just saying, just, chat, just instruct your moderators to check them too. Okay, let's in the chat try to be fair. And not be because I will just shut the whole damn chat down and me and Mike can have the discussion. So since he can't simulcast, show some leeway, show some leniency. Let's continue. Uh, I want to I want to just show everybody what he did here before we move on. Um, are you saying that right here when it says uh, <laughs> uh, for I will save you and he will make a full end of nations and scatter you? This is talking about spiritual israelites 
Oh, so, no, no, listen, listen, no. Because I don't think you Hold answered on. anything in Jeremiah 30. Oh, okay, it was quite a few questions. So if I missed that, forgive me. Okay, you know in what? That. You know what? You know what? For the sake of time, let me just move on. Um, you 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 went to Galatians 3, and since you went there, I'd like to uh address that. Galatians 3 and 16. Now, Mike, I don't disagree that the Israelites uh well, first of all, it's it's contingent. You know, I will bless those that bless you, curse those that curse you. Israelites were cursed by all nations. So that was a contingency plan. Now, but in the end, we believe, and I, I want you to understand this. Maybe you haven't heard me say this. We believe that in the kingdom of heaven, all these nations are going to receive a judgment and curses, as the Bible says. And it does talk about captives, which we'll, we'll get there, subjugation, ethnic hierarchy, racial stratification. But after that, then the nations will get uh get peace, get some type of compassion, but would never be on the same level as the Israelite. And I can prove that as we move on. I just wanted you to understand that. Now, what I disagree with, all you Christians are going to probably want to leave the channel right now. What I disagree with is Paul's exegesis of Galatians 3 and 16. The all nations being blessed part, I don't have a problem with that, but there's an order of prophecy. They got to get their judgment first, like we got our judgment. And then we teach them the law, <laughs> statutes, and commandments. So, but in Galatians 3 and 16, oh, no. I disagree with Paul's exegesis of the text. I'm going to lay out a series of scriptures and then I'll let you respond. All right. Well, let me uh, go ahead. But one, one quick second, one quick second. You disagree with Paul or you disagree, disagree with, with me? I, um, my understanding. I disagree, with, I disagree with Paul's understanding of Galatians. Wow. <laughs> so Paul, you, now, not, you don't think Paul, you Paul, Paul, Paul don't know the scripture. Okay. Well, all right, go ahead. First of all, See, this is going to lead down to something else. Paul said he prophesied in parts and knowing parts, and even James rebuked him for going off in Acts chapter 21. We stand uh, on that. We stand on that regardless. No man is infallible but Christ. Anyway, Galatians 3 and 16. I want you to answer this. I want everybody to hear this clearly. Now, the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say at the offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one as to your offspring, which is Christ. So are you saying... With your understanding of what Paul is saying, you're you're saying that when God was blessing Abraham and giving him the blessing and promise that that seed he was talking about was Christ and not the Israelites. Yes, that's what okay. Paul said. That's what okay. the word said. That's what God let's said. At, let's look at the blessing. Genesis 22 and 17. Genesis 22 and 17. It says, I will surely bless you and will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as mm -hmm. the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring, Abraham's offspring, this is the blessing and promise, shall possess the gate of his enemies, the land of his enemies, which is the Nile to the Euphrates. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Let me get a couple more and I'll give it to you. Genesis 26 echoes the same thing. Verse 2. And the Lord, uh, verse three, sojourn in this land and I will be with you and I will bless you for to you and to your offspring. I will give all these lands the now to the Euphrates and I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham, your father. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and will give to your offspring all these lands. I got a couple more. But before I go. Can you just answer simply? I'm going to give you a chance to rebuttal the whole thing. But simply, who is the offspring here that will be multiplied as the sand of the sea and that will get all the land? OK. Every born again believer. OK. What land are you guys getting? Oh, yeah. Is it? I just want to know when it's my time because I want to be able to respond fully. OK. Can I respond. All right. I, I'll, give, I'll, I'll keep going. Acts chapter three, verse twenty five. You are the sons of the prophets. And of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, and in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. We even have the apostles in Acts 3 saying that the promises, the offspring, are the children who he's talking to, the children of the prophets or the sons of the prophets. And in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9, I'm sorry, 11, verse 9, by faith he went to live in the land of the promise. The land of the promise is Abraham's land from the Nile to the Euphrates, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. The promise is the land. It came to his descendants. And there's another scripture 
that proves this as well. Uh, but I'll, I'll just let you respond to this. What land did did uh, the Lord tell Abraham that his descendants would uh, would possess and that his offspring would be as the sands of the sea? And it says the gate of his enemies. That's the land, the Amorite, the land of the Amorites, the land of the Canaanites. I'll let you address that. Go ahead. You got it. Take your All time. Right. OK, cool, cool, cool. Glad, glad, gladly. So what 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 seems to be happening here is you are confusing the temporal type in the shadow with the eternal. Right. Share my screen, if you will. It's shared. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, let's see here. Watch this. So there was a natural land promise that God fulfilled with Israel. Now I'm reading here from Joshua chapter number 21. Watch this. Cause I know you think you're getting some land, but I got to break some, break, break some news to this. Everybody hope they sitting down, right? Verse 43. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land, which he swore to give unto their fathers and they possessed it and dwelt therein. Verse 44. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swear unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The, the, the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Watch verse 45. Now, there failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. Watch this now. All came to pass. So there is a temporal promise which deals with the natural, but in the new covenant, we understand that they're talking about the eternal promises. Now, let me show you real quick the eternal promise right here. Oh, I forgot. I, I got them linked. <laughs> All right, right here. Uh, okay, I just got to turn to it again. Romans chapter number four, verse number 13. Watch this. For the promise that he, Abraham, should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. See, Canaan was typological of what God would ultimately give to Abraham's descendants, which is the world. I keep telling these folks, y'all fighting to get over there to that little strip of land in Palestine when the promise, the ultimate promise that God made to Abraham wasn't about that strip of land in Palestine, but it was that he would be the heir to the world world. See, the land of Israel that God gave the nation, the ethnic Israelites, which included Gentiles, by the way, mixed multitude and others who had uh, converted in, such as Ruth and Rahab, right? So it always included other nations. We saw that typologically throughout the scriptures. But the ultimate promise is not that strip of land that's no bigger than Delaware, right? That's nothing to rejoice about. The promise is God's restoration for the world, because you got to go beyond the promise promise made to ethnic Israelites and go back to what God told Adam in Genesis chapter number three. Watch this. I'll say this and then I'll stop. I'll say this and stop. I won't be too long. Genesis three. This is the the uh, uh, proto evangelion. In other words, it is the first evangelical message. This is the first gospel in the scriptures. Genesis three fifteen. When God was speaking to the serpent, he says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. Your seed and her seed. It shall bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. This was the first prophecy of Christ coming to gain the victory over Satan. When Satan gained victory over not just Israel, there was no Israel uh, in Adam per se. They didn't exist. But in Adam, all the nations, all humanity fell into sin. Romans 5, 12, by one man sin enter into the world, not just into Israel, right? So, so this prophecy here was that God, through Christ, his son, is going to restore the world, right? See, y'all limiting God by talking about that strip of land. Okay, okay cool. All praises. So, um, you know, let's just move on. Let's just move on for time's sake. Um, it's clear, I think. Uh, so let's just move on. Are you a believer in Christ? Uh, absolutely. Are you a Gentile? I believe I 
am ethnically a Gentile, but I am a son of God through faith, the faith of Abraham. For Abraham believed God and God counted him righteous, not based on blood, but based on faith. Well, so a Gentile, a Gentile can't be a son of God. What are you, what are you saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're a Gentile. All right. So do you believe there's going to be a third temple? Yes or no? No, not okay. well. Wait a minute. Let me, I'm sorry. I was a, a little quick. Let me, let me, no. Okay. Well, let me take that back. It is possible that they could build some temple, but the, the temple that God is focused on, you looking at them. We okay. are the temple of God, the, right. the place where the Holy Spirit dwells. See, right. it's not about brick and mortar. Peter says that we are lively stones right. built together. <laughs> right. So, so I, I, I hear you, brother. <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm just, uh, I, I got to be thorough. I'm, a, I'm an educator. Can I get a warning to, uh, uh, what's his name? Moderators, uh, uh, Yabanya. Yeah, you get tell dude to stop spamming. They can they can give their opinions, they can post scriptures, they can give statements, but please stop spamming. Um, all my Christians, y'all, let's don't call names, y'all. Just be nice, you know. Say amen to the preacher, you know. And everything. So all right, everybody so be nice. 11, Revelation eleven and one, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, "Rise and measure the temple of God." Is this the literal temple or a spiritual temple? This is revelation is written in science. I'll show you that when I respond. So why don't you break it down? Because it's going to take this going to take me Mike, at least my Mike, Mike. I would never tell you, no, I'm not answering. I'll wait till you're done. So can you just answer? Is this the little okay, all right. well, you're going to be trying to stop me? Right. I believe John was seeing a vision and see John was given a read like unto a rod. Right. And he measured. And now think about this. I just asked you, the literal temple or a spiritual temple, brother. It's not literal. Put it okay. down. Okay. So it says this spiritual temple or figurative temple. It says in the altar and them that worship therein. So there's some people that are in this spiritual temple. But watch this, Mike. But the court that is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. So why aren't the Gentiles being included in this spiritual temple? You got it. That's, a, that's such a great question. I appreciate that question because this is really going to help. Notice what it says. The gen the outer court, the outer court, was, which was still sacred ground, was given to Gentiles. But, but what this verse is saying is the same thing that was communicated in Matthew, I believe, 24 in the book of Luke, where it talks about the nations will have dominion for a period of time. That's all this verse is telling us, that the nations will have dominion for a period of time, which is why it goes on to say that the, 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 the court, which is without leave out, scroll down just for me a little bit so we can read the rest of that and measure it not for it is given to the nations and the holy city shall be tread underfoot for 40 and two months. So you telling me that all the saints going to be in the temple, the Israelites going to be in the temple, just worshiping and praising God. And they can't even step outside the temple to the outer court because a bunch of Gentiles going to be in there and the nation's going to have power over that literal Jerusalem. No, you got to understand the typological message that John is communicating in this apocalyptic letter right now. But let me say this in all fairness. I'm going to say this in fairness. There Thank are se there are several views of this apocalyptic uh, letter. And I could I could pull up three references of different theologians that'll kind of explain this differently than I have. I'm not dogmatic on this because again, as I stated initially, prophecy can always be obscure until fulfillment. I think the point of the text, whether we wanted to make it literal or not, the point of the text is that there's a period of time where Gentiles will have dominion. That's the point of the text. We can debate about what well, is going to be literal temple. It's going to be out. Where the Gentiles really going to be? We can debate about that. That's the small stuff. The point of the text is that the period of time where the Gentiles will have dominion. Okay, got you. All praises. So uh, let's continue again, y'all. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, see, I appreciate see, Mike. I don't have any. I don't have any problem or contention with Mike. I'm glad he took this discussion, and I hope Christians and Hebrews alike can take information from this discussion. Let's try to keep it peaceful in the chat. Y'all just you. follow y'all just follow me and Mike. If me and Mike ain't ain't yelling at each other and calling names and ad homs, then y'all don't do it either, right? Appreciate that, D. So, Thank uh, you, D. So at this juncture, we're just because he's under the school of thought that Gentiles mixed with Jews 
are going to be ruling over other nations in the kingdom of heaven, which I've never heard a preacher teach that on Sunday. And I'm under the school of thought that just the Israelites will be reigning and ruling and having power over the other nations in the kingdom. And so I asked him if, uh, if, if the promises are no longer the bloodline Israel as a whole and exclusively, then we should see no perks, privileges, or benefits that Israelites get that Gentiles don't get. So my 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 next question would be, uh, brother Elder Mike, um, if if Jew, Jewish believers, for lack of better words, and Gentile believers are on the same level, then can can a Gentile sit on one of the twelve thrones that Christ promised to the twelve disciples in Matthew nineteen twenty eight? So hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me just read it. Jesus so, said. I Matthew 19, 28, Jesus said to them, truly, I say unto you in the new world, when the son of man will sit on his glorious throne, you will follow me. You also will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So can Gentiles have this benefit and right and privilege? Well, no, because oh. hold on. Wait, let me, let me, I want to give a complete answer. It's not going to be long. That's fine. These were, you can't sit there. <laughs> Those were given the to the 12. Line. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is talking about the 12 disciples. Oh, praise right. Him. Now, you, Deke, are not Peter, James, John, Bartholomew. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> you can't even that. you can't sit in Peter's seat. So so that. so here's my point. Here's my point. Let me say this and sum it up. My point is these are individual promises given to individual people for their individual work in the kingdom right mm, gotcha. so so but this isn't saying i'm giving 12 thrones to the israelite nation that gentile nations can't no no that's not what it's saying matter of fact hold on let me if, if i can go to one more verse right yeah right, you got it Bloody. right let's go to revelation uh, let's see here. Let's go to Revelation. Okay, if you could share my screen, I, I like my Bible here. You know, something about a man yeah. and his sword. Go ahead, brother. All right, here we go. Here we go. Watch this again. Watch this to him that overcomes. See, not now we're not limited here. Will I grant to sit with me? Who we talking to the church? And if you overcome, I grant to sit with me. In my throne, even as I overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Oh, I'm going to be on the throne, bro, because I'm going to overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of his testimony. And I will sit with him in his throne, even as he overcame and is set down with the father on his throne. OK, all praises. Now, my next question is, if uh, bloodline Israelites don't have uh more privilege and rights than gentile believers in the kingdom of heaven can a gentile be a part of the 144,000 in revelation 7 yes or no oh my goodness okay <laughs> so can i have a, at least 2 minutes to break this down damn you need all that time go ahead brother i love you go ahead <laughs> you know the you you all right Y'all right with me. Y'all right with me. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to put in a good word for you when I get in the kingdom. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna be on the you, see the pride, you see the pride of Christianity. I'm, just, I'm joking, Beak. I'm joking with you. All right, go uh, ahead. Kind of. No. <laughs> now watch this though, real quick. Real quick. Um real quick. I want I want, uh if you could just share my screen though, real quick. Gotcha. And I'll get I'll get to your hundred forty four thousand question, but we got to I got to I got to paint this right. Remember, yeah. I told you I'm I'm am an educator. I, I like to educate the culture for Christ. Mike, Mike, Mike. If you're finna do what I think you're gonna do, oh, oh I'm you no, wait a minute, wait, go ahead, wait. go ahead, go ahead, you got it, you got <laughs> don't, it. Don't be you turn a preemptive strikes. Come on, man. <laughs> All right, watch this. Matthew chapter number eight, verse number eleven, and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. But the children of the kingdom, 
Who, who's the children of the kingdom Jesus talking about here? Those are Israelites. Thank you. Shall be cast out mm -hmm. into so outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of cheek, teeth. And mm -hmm. then remember, and Jesus said to the centurion. Now, this was a Roman right here. See, well, all, Romans I, all Roman, there was some Roman Israelites. Paul said he was a Roman too. Okay, yeah, but not this one. Not uh, this one. Okay, that's an assertion. <laughs> right. No, not, but not, Mike, no, Mike, no, hold Mike, on. Before you go, let's let's deal with this text before you go. So you do you said the children of the kingdom are the Israelites, right? Hold on. The children oh, of the kingdom. Yeah. Children of the kingdom. Right. Hold on. It, yes, the children to whom the kingdom was promised. Uh-huh. Those are Israelites. The, the idiot. Yes, the this was specifically talking. I, I don't negate. The God, listen, God chose the ethnic people of Israel to represent him, no, to Mike, be his people in the earth. Sure. Yes, just, yes, yes. So, so no, according to you, no Israelites will be in the kingdom of heaven. I didn't say that. No, I just read the text. Okay, Paul is you, an Israelite. Can, Peter's an Israelite. Okay, can you explain what he's saying so everybody can under, uh, get your understanding? Because if it says the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness, then yes. you, you believe that the children of the kingdom are the Israelites then yes. that means that there will be no Israelites in the kingdom? Or why is he saying that? Can you explain it a little further for us? Sure. No problem at all. The ethnicity, the, the ethnicity. For, for, so, for example, right, in, in the old covenant, you were born an Israelite, circumcised on the eighth day, which made you a covenant member of the household of faith, an Israelite, a child of God. See, that is that is no longer the criteria to be a covenant person. So it is the ethnic distinction. So the Israelites as a nation, as a nation, it's not no longer about ethnicity. This is what this is saying is so that's why he's saying the sons of the kingdom, which were the Israelites will be cast out. And many is at most of the Israelites not going to make it. I okay, mean, most so, Gentiles, so. most Gentiles not going to make it either. So that's, you know what I mean? But, okay. but so, Mike, Mike, what you're telling the people, Cause my Israelites, they ready to go. They ready for you to post your address. They getting angry. I'm joking, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like hey, when hey, you first hey, read don't it, let the smooth first... taste fool you. Now, now let's go ahead. No. Read it without without expounding on it. It it makes it seem like you know you're taking this text to say no Israelites, which are no, we are of the... course. Yeah, so when yeah, the Bible I already says, told you, Paul, Peter, you know, I would never say no Israelites gonna be saved. I even already said that the remnant, the seven thousand who have not bent the knee, right? The, that was uh typological of God's restoring and saving Israelites in the new covenant. Okay, so so the children of the kingdom, you would agree, even as right here, when it says the children of the kingdom is talking about bloodline Israelites. Yes, okay. So in response to, to what you just mentioned here, uh uh, I want to because I had it pulled up and I'm glad you went here uh, in Matthew 13. It said 38. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. When Christ is given this parabolic prophecy, why is he saying uh -huh. only the children of the kingdom are the good seed and they're being reaped by the angels at the end time of the eschaton? Because that's because it's true. See, hmm. okay. now share my screen and I'm a, and I'll re respond thoroughly. Share my screen real quick. Watch this. See, in Ephesians chapter number three, we get the understanding. Watch, watch what Paul says, starting at verse one. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, the nations, if indeed you have heard of the di dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you. Watch this. The how that by revelation. See, the revelation is revealing something that wasn't previously known. He made known to me the mystery, right? The mysterion, something not previously known, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse five, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now been revealed by the spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. So Paul is making it clear here that there's a revelation that is being made known to him, to him, because he got the revelation and to the holy apostles and prophets 
that was not known in per previous times, previous ages. Watch, this was the revelation. This is why this can't be the Northern Kingdom, because the scripture tells us the God's going to save the Northern Kingdom. Hold on, Sikari. hold on, hold on. Let me Sikari. just read verse six. Sikari this was that, Mike. Sikari oh, oh, well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Verse six. That the so the revelation is that the Gentiles now this is this gonna bless somebody the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. See, this word here in Greek has reference to same citizenship, equal rights of the same body. See, fel a fellow heir is a person with equal rights. They're of the same body. They, we, the, they're not the foot while, while the Israelites the head. No, it's the same body and hmm. partakers of the promise in Christ through the gospel. So a Gentile who is a covenant member of the one people of God, the body of Christ, right? He says that right here and I'll be done right here. I'll be done. This Thanks. is why he says, uh, for he himself is our peace who has made both one and broken down the middle wall of separation and abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances so to create in himself <clears throat> one new man from mm. the two thus making peace and mm. that he may reconcile them both in God or to God in one body through the cross. Okay. So one body, one people, one covenant, fellow heirs, fellow citizens, you, equal Mike. rights. Okay, got you, Mike. Now, if 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 what your if your understanding is true, and those Gentiles are not Israelites, which Israelites are called Gentiles in the Bible and even heathen, if what you're saying is true, then we would we wouldn't be able to find all these prior scriptures that I presented that show Israelites have been, if there's a type of fellow heir, if there's a fellow heir that's a non-Israelite, we shouldn't find any benefits, rights, and privileges that Israelites get that Gentiles do not get. So that's my response to that. Let's move forward. Come on, D. That's, that's the right. best response to that. Yeah, you got to keep moving. Look at all these pictures. All right, all right. All right. All right. This is a, Go ahead. That's right, 14, verse 16. <laughs> I mean, Mike, you even said that I don't even want to, you guys hear it. Everybody who's watching should hear it. I don't want to have to bring up prior scriptures that we just brung up because it's just going to make Mike talk for about four to five more minutes. <laughs> so Zachariah 14. Zachariah 14. Everybody in the chat keeps posting Daniel 2 and 44. I'm going to tell you guys this. Everybody keeps posting Daniel 2 and 44. And they're spamming it. Chill out, y'all. But since you guys are posting it, Brother Mike, Daniel 2 and 44 says the kingdom won't be left to other people. How would you deal with that? Okay, let me read it because context matters. I don't believe in proof texting. You know, snatch a verse out and just make it mean what you want it to mean. But, but for future reference, y'all, if I please do not spam. I, I mean, I like your guys's. I like your support. I like your, your activity in the chat. I do not need y'all's help though. For future reference, please stop doing that. But uh, this is it right here. It's on the screen. And in oh, the day of these good. kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. This is the kingdom. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But this kingdom Very will break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. So who's this kingdom being left to that other people can't get, but this kingdom is going to destroy all these other people. Very good. Now, the kingdom is being left to the covenant people of God, which under the old covenant, through the lenses of their culture, were the ethnic Israelites who were in covenant with God. Through New Testament revelation, I've already showed you that, that what I read in Ephesians chapter 3 was not made known here in Daniel to other ages that what? Gentiles are fellow heirs. See, this and is that's why, you, that's why, that's why, that's why, why Mike, go ahead, Salaki. All right, so so the Gentiles are now part of this kingdom, in which it doesn't negate what Daniel is saying, right? This kingdom that shall not be left to other people that will stand forever. It simply includes, it includes the Gentiles. It doesn't negate the believe in Israelites. It's going to be Israelites in the kingdom, right? Okay, but it, it includes Gentiles. Brother Mike, 
So this is why I wasn't going to go here because all you were going to say is, yeah, this is it. And I just want the chat to know the reason why I didn't go here, because all he's going to do is say, well, it's Israelites and Jews in this kingdom. So my question to you before we move on. So Jews and Gentile believers are going to break in pieces and destroy all these kingdom, all kingdoms. OK, Can you teach your church I'm that. I'm going to say uh, yes, <laughs> but again, okay. well, again, again. Hold on one second. Let me. I'm wanting me 15 seconds. Apocalyptic literature have to be understand through understood through the lenses of the culture that they're communicating in the language they can understand. So we can discuss what broken in pieces and all that means. But the answer is yes. Okay, cool. Uh, Zechariah 14 to 16. If the Israelites don't have any benefits, privileges, or rights more than ethnic Gentiles, then why in Zechariah 14 and 16 they have to come to our land, which you said that the land didn't matter anymore. This is clearly a future kingdom prophecy, kingdom connotation in the eschaton. They have to come to our land to keep the feast. And if they don't, they won't get any rain and their land will be a famine. Let me just read this and I'll give it to you. Zechariah 14, 16. Then everyone who survives of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of booths. And if any of the families of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain on them. And if they of the family of Egypt does not go up and present themselves, then on them shall be no rain. There shall be the plague with which the Lord afflicts the nations that do not go up to keep the feast of booths. Okay. Share my screen. These all these this is why it's so important to understand prophecy through the lenses of the authors who are writing them. When the Old Testament prophets prophesied, they prophesied through the lenses of their current covenant. The fulfillment must be understood through the lenses of how the apostles described it. So I'm gonna go to two different passages. Here's the first one. Watch what the Hebrew writer says here, right? But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You see this? So, so what the Old Testament prophets saw typologically, the New Testament authors are showing how these things are taking place. Watch it. Because again, we're not keeping no feast of booze. I know y'all think we are, but 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 I'm gonna show you we're not. That's done, right? The, right, because that is fulfilled in Christ. We are tabernacled, which is what that booths mean, in him through faith. We have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, right? And I could read down, but for the sake of time, let me just go to my second passage, St. John chapter number four. Watch this. Right? Watch what Jesus says to the woman at the well, this Samaritan woman. Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain, which was Mount Gezeret, right? Because the Samaritans built their own temple on their own mountain, right? But neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. So you could be, y'all could be stuck back there in the old covenant without understanding New Testament revelation. If you want, you're going to miss the blessing though. But watch this. You worship what you know now. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, right? God, Brought salvation through the Jew. Nobody argues that. Verse Wait, hold on, hold on, Mike. Isn't that isn't that a perk and privilege that the Gentiles don't have? Why couldn't uh, salvation come through the Gentiles to the world? Why did it have to come through the Jews to the world? Well, there is there, okay. There is a perk and the privilege that God gave, actually gave them a couple. It we're, I thought you were talking about eternal perks, oh, but okay. but yes, God did choose Jacob over Esau to be his people. Yes. So, okay. so if you talk about that, yeah, that's a privilege. That's a privilege. I'll give you that, right? That's Bible, right? I, I don't deny the word of God, right? Now watch verse 23. But the hour is coming, check this out, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, 
for the father is seeking such to worship him. See, we already are sitting together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are worshiping him, not in Jerusalem. Watch what Jesus said this, right? This ain't Paul here. I know y'all say we quote Paul, but Jesus said, not in Jerusalem, nor in Jerusalem will you worship the father? <clears throat> See, if you have the spirit and the spirit is omnipresent and you understand that God cannot be restricted to time space continuum. Okay. That by the spirit of God, we have fellowship with him. It okay. is not about the physical strip of land over there that y'all trying to get back to. Okay, this Mike. is about worshiping him in spirit <laughs> and in truth. Okay. Uh, I, I don't think you answered anything in Zechariah 14. I, I, I've been letting you get by. I've been letting you skate, but I, I can't do it on this one. So let's let's go through this line by line. And let's just get an understanding line by line. Zechariah 14, 16. Then everyone who survives of all the nations. When is this? When did this happen? Uh, it, it's there's there's an already but not yet principle to this. OK, right? when and any time the, the nations come against Jerusalem and then they survived. I mean, they came against Jerusalem. They got destroyed. A few of them survived, a remnant survived, rather. And then they had to go up year to year to worship. No, no, no. Listen, the already but not yet. I do believe there's an ultimate consummation when Christ comes to con be the consummation of all things, restore all things to himself. Right. Okay. So when it says right. they got to go up to keep the, these other nations got to go up to keep the feast. What does that mean when it says these other nations have to go up to keep the feast? What that means is understanding what the New Testament authors have told us is that ultimately for the nations, this is really preaching salvation to the nations as well, but ultimately Christ, who is our tabernacle, we are tabernacled in him according to the new covenant. He becomes the fulfillment of all these Old Testament prophecies. And so what this is simply telling us is that the nations themselves find their security in Christ. You gotta know how to read prophecy. It's apocalyptic language, right? Feast of, feast of Tabernacles. Yes, feast right. What, what, what about the other feasts? Where, did, where, where does the, so all the feasts, okay. So how is, how is, how is, I asked you this before, you didn't have an answer. How is, how is Christ the new moon feast? How is Christ? The, no, Christ fulfilled the new moon feast because those new moons simply mark times for Israel until Christ would come, who is our eternal savior. And so when Christ comes, it's not about the, the moons or, or or any of the uh, bodies in the sky. Listen it's about saying, him. Mike, listen to what I'm saying, Mike. How is Christ the fulfillment of the Sabbath? Christ is the fulfillment of the Sabbath. So all you got to do is read Hebrews chapter number four that says I those am, that believe. You want me to answer? answer? You, you, you stop it. <laughs> You're but gonna say stop it. Our rest, right? Hold on, but let me let me say I like it the way I say it. <laughs> In Hebrews chapter number four, the scripture says that he who believes ultimately finds their rest in him. Okay, so how is Christ the feast of tabernacles? Christ is the feast of tabernacles because the tabernacle, remember, Jesus said, destroy this body, and in three days I'll raise it up. Or That's he said, destroy wait a minute. That's the hold spiritual on. temple. That's the spiritual hey, temple, hey, not the piece of tents. No, no, this is gonna bless you, Deep. Now watch this. The the tents were pointed to the temple. The temp, remember, they took the tabernacle, they double. If you, we got, I'm sure you you understand something about the the biblical history. They took the tabernacle where the ark of the covenant was. Moses robbed it. I mean, Aaron's robbed their buddy in the dish of man. They, they took the they took the tabernacle when they built the temple. They doubled its size, and the tabernacle was located in the temple. And Je this is why Jesus Christ is the temple, which was destroyed and ro rose again on the third day. We, as believers, according to the Apostle Paul, are the temple of God, the place where the Holy Spirit dwells. Again, okay. when okay. you read the Old Testament without considering what has been revealed in the new, you stay in the dark with that veil over your eyes, well, well, as well. Paul said. Well, how are you how are you building your house from the top down instead of the instead of the ground up? When you're saying that you have to go to get a New Testament lens, the Bible does not say that at all. 
That's for uh, one. But anyway, you know, share my screen. Me, no, we won't bless share, share, share my me, screen. I gave you, I gave you too you, much time. You I said the Bible me. don't say that. You gotta let me get, prove it. Build it from the top down and not the bottom up, the ground Bro, up. Come let me on, just man. keep going. I gave you three and a half <laughs> four minutes already, and everybody in the <laughs> chat is even saying that. Um come on, man. Micah five and eight. Micah five and eight. Yes, I want, sir. I want you to read verses eight. To 13 and you break it down because i see when i read it you just don't answer it you just go to another scripture so read micah 5 8 to 13 and just break it down if there's equal rights and fellow heirs why is israelites why is god using the israelites to conquer the nations and you're but you're saying it's the church that he's using to conquer the nations. so just break down micah 5 8 to 13 for us you got the floor all right can you share my screen yes sir share my screen yes sir all right you so Micah 5 and 8, and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, who, if he passes through, both treads down the, and tears in pieces and, and none can deliver. You want me to keep reading or is this good? If you can, I said 8 to 13, but if you can oh, okay. explain okay. as you go, that would help, please. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So remember the remnant of Jacob among the Gentiles. I do believe this had the immediate context of the scattering of the natural Israelites among the nations that 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 the prophet Micah is referring to. Right. This is not the scattering, Mike. I got to correct you because prophecy is not your expertise. But it says the remnant of bro, Jacob. Bro, hold on, 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 bro. Mike, <laughs> let me explain. I'm, you just said prophecy. this is the scattering. It's not the scattering. It says. The Israelites are among the Gentiles like a lion in the beast of the forest tearing them down. This has nothing to do with the scattering, brother. That's it. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go back here because 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 we got to bless you. Hold on for a second. Let's go back. All the way. <laughs> see. Right. To verse number two. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah. Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel. We know Christ fulfills this, whose goings forth are from old, from everlasting, because he's God. He's, his goings forth are from everlasting. He has no beginning. Therefore, he shall give them up until that, until time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel, and he shall stay. Three, please. Can you explain Can it as you go, not just read it, please? Okay. All right. I'm, I'm trying to get to your verse. All right. Now, now there's no now, now your, now your chat gonna be saying I'm taking too long. I'm all right. Just know I'm answering your questions. All right. Again, this is talking about the future prof prophecy of Christ coming, and when Christ comes, the promise that he's going to restore. The nation of Israel will be unraveled, right? Will be unraveled, right? Until the time that she who is in labor has given forth. Who then is the, the remnant. Who is the she? Well, well, uh, there are two takes here, right? Right. Some, but the she here is Israel. Okay, ethnic Israel, right? The she here is Israel. Christ, according to Rome, and, and I'm going there next, right? After giving birth. What does that mean by giving birth? Israel giving birth. What does that mean? Christ came through Israel. That's so, it. Okay. Then now remember, you not letting me answer. Now you deterring the answer by asking other questions. Just, no, I just want got, that to be on the record. We got time now since we're in since you done. Yeah, I don't have that much more time. So to the, we got to the top of the to the top of the thing. You done scrolled all the way up. So we might as well deal with it. So it says when Christ returns, since you said this is talking about ethnic Israel and Christ's birth, says then the remnant of his brethren shall return. That when did the remnant of his brother return? They're returning now. They returned it when Paul, as a believer, when Paul was saved. So there's an already but not yet principle. You remember, remember, and I can show you that clearly in the New Testament. See, again, we can't, you can't erase. It's almost like reading half the book, right? And when all you got to do is read the next few chapters, and you'll see how the story goes and how it ends. Anything. I haven't even said okay. anything. Right. I'm just right. asking right. you. You're okay. executing. Right. I'm answering. I'm answering. Okay, go right. ahead. All I'm simply saying is, is that. You, you can't stop it, Micah, 
right? Okay. Some uh, books were written after Micah. Revelation okay. was given beyond what Micah even understood. Okay, verse four, verse four. He shall stand and feed his block in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. Wait, right? so yeah. who's that he right there? Christ. That's Christ. And he has a God. Uh, he submits to the Father as God. He is also Yahweh. <laughs> no, but it said, it said his God. So who's the name Who's the name of his God? God, y Yahweh. Okay, What's so the his, his God's name is Yahweh. Okay, I He's Yahweh, and okay. he submits to Yahweh. Right, Wait, I can Yahweh, show you that too. That's a whole nother subject. Hey, Yahweh but, is a but if you want, uh, yes. Whoa, you know, Dr. James White or Michael Heiser wouldn't agree with you on that, right? Uh, Dr. Heiser, I didn't say he you was a singular Yah person. Yahweh he, is a substance that three people pull from. No, that's not. See, I got a now. That's a whole nother subject. Okay, my you bad. Go ahead, go ahead. You Sorry. misunderstand James White? No, Yahweh is a one God being. Oh, right? that's what I said. A being that three people, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. No, three distinct. Them. Not No, no. You, you got to understand this right. Three distinct persons, Father, Son, Spirit, which is why the three receive worship, which is why the three are creator God. Right. Who created the father? Who else created the son is accredited with creation. Who else okay. was creator? Let's not, the let's spirit. not get on that. I just wanted right. to, since that right. was there, no. since that was I there, can't. I wanted to. Right. I mean, all right, so yeah, verse, right, five, I, verse five. If you say it, I got to deal with it. So, all right, all right. <laughs> and this one shall be peace. Talking about Christ. Uh-huh. Right? When the Assyrian comes into our land and when he treads in our palaces, then when we did this raise... Happen? Again, this is apocalyptic literature. This is prophecy. Okay, can you, get, can you give us the understanding of what this is talking about? I've already said, already, not yet. What Micah's doing, he's referring, one, remember, the Assyrians overtook the northern kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so he is referring to captivity and dominance that the Assyrians have had against the people Israel. Yeah, but it says when the Assyrians come into our land, he, the Christ, will stand up against him. When did Christ fight against the Assyrians? Bro, okay, again. When they came into our land. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. Why, why don't we do this? Why don't you break it down? Because <laughs> you keep stopping. You break it down, and then uh, then, then I can tell you whether I agree with you, and I can show you where I disagree with you. How about no, that? No, you keep I, stopping me. No, you but, keep stopping me. So, so I'm you breaking it to, down. Mike, I'm breaking it down, and you okay, add let's, another let's question. This. Let's establish this. Well, you're breaking it down, and you don't want me to question your breakdown. Listen, I don't man you. Listen, you ask me one question. So I start breaking it down to answer that question. And then you think of another one. I'm trying to Come get on, all man. the meat off the bone, Mike. That's it. No, oh, you yeah. trying. Keep going, that, Keep going Mike. Like <laughs> Verse six. All right. Verse six. They shall waste with the sword the land of Assyria and the land of Nimrod. Now, remember, Nimrod was way back in Genesis, right? At his entrances. Right. So remember, so, so What's this is important. Now, hold on. Right. Remember, Nimrod was a uh, key in building the uh, Tower of Babel. Right. Yeah, but what's, so, his land, though? what's his land that this is talking about? Babylon. OK, you're correct. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thus, he shall deliver us from the Assyrian. Right. Again, typological. It's, this is this has to be understood. He's because the northern tribe was scattered by the Assyrians, right? Micah is bringing it. He's going to deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land, when he treads within our borders. Then the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many peoples, right? And this is prophetic of salvation for Gentiles as well. Because the, <laughs> hold on, let me show you. Let me show you the remnant of Jacob, which is what I told you, right? The, which is what you talked about in Romans chapter number 11, right? That remnant, that election, those Israelites that will be saved in the midst of many peoples. Who are those peoples that they are in the midst of? The Gentiles. Okay, like well, let's, let's, Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's in the midst of the Gentiles. I agree. But keep very reading. Good. Huh? I'm going to keep reading. Okay. All right. Like, like dew from the Lord, like showers on the ground. All this is, you know, par uh, you know, parabolic language, you know, talking about uh, their benefits and things like that that tarry for no man, nor wait for the sons of men. 
and the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many peoples, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among flocks of sheep, who, if he passes through, both treads down and tears in pieces and none can deliver. Now, right? has that happened already? Uh, no, the consummation has not taken place. No. Okay, so there's a future time where the Gentiles are going to be among the Gentiles. I'm sorry, the Israelites are going to be among the Gentiles, tearing them to pieces. This not, okay. Doc, are we reading the same Bible? This don't say that this is going to tear the Gentiles. No, 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 no. It Read says that last saw, hold on, both treads down and tears in pieces. Tear it does tear in pieces, but who is it? It doesn't say that the peoples that he's among are going to be torn in pieces. What this has reference to is that anyone who would try to or overcome that these people, which of course includes the remnant of Israel and the Gentiles, will be the authority okay. and no and will have power. They will okay, rule, they'll nine, be the ruler. Verse nine, verse nine your hands and shall be lifted up against, against your adversaries. Your adversaries. Who's, right. Now remember these, who's, the these were, who's the adversaries of let's say, for example, uh, a white Christian believer. Who who is the enemy and adversary of the white Christian nation? that that god has to destroy okay i'm gonna I'm break all that down if you allow me right here contextually because it's important to deal with the context there's a there's a reason why micah brought up the assyrians and there's a reason why he brought up babylon because it was the assyrians that took the northern kingdom and it was the babylonians that took the southern kingdom, southern kingdom. so I, I agree with you mike right, right, so so here's but my point did, but, Hold but on. The he here the he here ah, you 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 mike the I, he I can't here. even get you you not let me get to the point d i'm right, getting my apologies, there. my apologies go ahead okay so so there's a reason so micah here is using the language that his audience the current audience would understand through the captivities that his people israel had encountered and that god the lord christ when he when he comes the, they'll be delivered from the assyrian and the babylonian right right so so and this is what he is referring to so within the context he's dealing with their natural enemies in the context but let me show you New Testament context here. See, because again, we got a whole book of Revelation and it doesn't say this in this way. So New Testament context is this. Watch this. Hold on. Just to be clear, Mike, you, you said that I just want everybody to hear what you said. And I want you to get Revelation. You said a few, there's a future prophecy where the yes. Israelites will be destroying the Gentiles and their enemies and their adversaries. But the church, the multi-ethnic, uh, the, the Gentiles will be joined with them executing that judgment. Okay. So again, <laughs> again, the, this prophecy is true. There is a future time in the consummation of all things when the nations who reject, ultimately rejected the Messiah, rejected Christ, will be judged, right? We agree with that, right? We'll be judged. That's all this verse is telling us that ultimately, because if an Assyrian accepts Christ, well, he's going to be amongst the Gentiles who are amongst the people of God, amongst okay. the covenant people of God, right? Mike, so, I have a question. I have a question. Oh. I have a question. I have a question because we just basically read this whole chapter. I have a question though, and, and if you could be precise, I don't even have to pull a scripture. I just really want to know. So the Israelites, righteous Israelites like Daniel, they had to go through captivity. Ezra and Nehemiah had to go through captivity. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they couldn't escape the prophecy, the curses. But you're saying like a, a Gentile who believes on Christ, they can now escape their curses when righteous Israelites couldn't even escape their curses. Wait a minute. Righteous Israelites. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. First of all, there's none righteous. No, not one. Only Christ. But but let me say this. Our righteousness. Why did Christ comes, save the hold blood on, of righteous hold on. Abel? I'm and listen. I, let me, why he, well, hold no, on. Because I, Christ is Christ will feel, because because Christ fulfills that. Life. Come on, D. Come on, D. D. Come on. Uh, because Christ fulfills that. He is true Israel. He is the son called out of Egypt. Christ no, fulfills that. That has nothing to do with what I'm asking. I'm saying a Gentile. 
gets to just say, I'm sorry for having no, uh, no, a thousand God, slaves. Let me ask you, hold on. In, I believe in Christ. Let me, let me articulate my question. I, I can't even Christ. articulate your answers. You keep stopping me. <laughs> I just wanted to know a Gentile who believes in Christ. The Bible says that the gen the, the, that there's a judgment on these other nations. They get to just repent, say they believed in Jesus and strive to be like Jesus, and they escape all their curses and judgments. But the right the the Israelites, it was so Daniel wasn't righteous. Hold on, yeah, Daniel was righteous, but let me but, but let me clarify. Okay, something. so so wait 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 no 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 let me yeah, answer let me answer they, how come they can't let escape me, the, the curses but Gentiles can. nobody is did God judge Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes, he did. Did God judge Egypt? Yes, he did. Did God judge Assyria? Yes. Did God judge Babylon? So yes. stop saying Gentiles is escaping their judgment. They're not. No Gentile. God judged the nations. As a matter of fact, he judged all. He judged uh, Edom. He judged the nations. Yeah, but if God says oh, wait, that wait, he's going to destroy, he's gonna destroy no, all Edomites. Let me finish. He, Hold on. He just, let me finish the, let me finish the response. You're he, dealing he, with a macro level. He, I'm dealing with a micro level. Not, not no, the nation. No, not no, the listen. Nation. No, can he judged, Gentile, no, no. Can one Dick, Gentile, Dick, Dick, I can't let you keep doing that. No, no, I'm not having one that. one Gentile Dick, from the Dick, Edomite nation no. repent Dick. and receive salvation and escape their judgment. That's all I want to know. No, the first of all, you weren't judged. <laughs> what, what's your judgment, Deke? Because every time I look at your videos, you're looking pretty good, Doc. What's I your mean, judgment? I mean, hold, on, you, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You weren't thrown in no lion's D and D. Where yes, your judgment but, at? You listen. Still, hold, on, hold, still, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have escaped. Just like a Gentile, if you believe you in Christ, I'm talking about the biblical. If you believe in a biblical Christ, you can be saved just like a biblical Gentile. So if he believes, can escape, he can be saved. You can escape so come your on, judgment, D. what you're saying. You can escape the judgment. No, God says he's oh, oh, let me let me show Edomites. Listen to what no. I'm saying. If God says he's going to destroy all Edomites. No, he said he's going to destroy the Edomite, Edomite nation, the Edomite nation. He, oh, I can oh show you where he God. said he's going to destroy the Israelites. All right, all right. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You know what? You know what? You know what? Let, let's just let's just keep moving. Let's you don't want to. Let's just keep I'm, moving. I'm trying to keep moving. You, you keep doing, stopping Mike. me. I know what you you're doing. keep stopping me. You're trying, to, you're trying to get out of. You're trying to get you, out. We're not letting you, you get stopping out. me because you realize I got you, Deke. Mike, how do you have me? How do you have you me? Keep, I, you keep. Explain to me Because you keep stopping me. Okay, you're going <laughs> you on keep the so that let me know you 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 preemptive striking, right? No. So so I'm coming, I'm coming with the real, I'm coming with the biblical text, and you want to stop me. Let me I can't I even get 60 seconds. Simple, out. I asked you a simple question. If God says he's gonna destroy all the Edomites and there, there won't be one remaining, he says verbatim. You're saying that one show of me them that verse, believe, okay. And after this, I'd like to get to my series of questions. <laughs> Where you been? <laughs> I like to You've finish. You've been on your series. Come on, man. What guy yeah, one in 18 eight, in the ESP? Eight, eight. You know, I ain't your average. I ain't your average yeah, Christian. Listen, you know. Shall, where, hold on. Let's do the King James. It says, and there shall not be any remaining out of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. So do you agree with the text? I agree with the text. The question is, what does the text mean? And what the text right. is saying is that, hold on, that the nations will be judged. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that there'll be no Edomite. Okay, let me read this. And there A shall lie. not be any remaining of the house of Esau. So let me ask you this, Mike. You're saying that there will be an Edomite remaining. Yes or no? All right. Share my screen. Yes. Share my screen. Watch, watch. Wow. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I know it's heavy. Hold on, watch this. That's crazy. Uh, one second here. Again, you got you got to understand how to read. I could show you where God said He was going to utterly destroy Israel. Now, now I could foolishly hold on, hold on for a second. Hold on, for a second. hold on, hold on. I could foolishly go to that one verse without understanding all other verses and try to pinhole you, which is what you're trying to do to me, right? But that would be unwise. That would be not good biblical hermeneutics. That would be not considering the whole of scripture and understanding all scripture through the lenses of one verse that you're misunderstanding, right? But it's important to get all the scripture. Now watch this. Uh, hold on. 
Here we go. Go to Acts 26. I got it. Acts 26. Watch this. First number 28. Now watch this. So, um, yeah, let me just, for the sake of time, because some people in your audience crying, talking about Mike taking too long. Then Agrippa said to Paul, now, do you know who Agrippa is? He's an Edomite. Thank you. He's an Edomite. That's why I like dealing with you, man. You you own it, man. He's an Edomite. And he said, Paul, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Christianos. Christianos. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you. Paul didn't say, well, sorry, Grip. <laughs> hey, Grip, can't do nothing for you because Micah said not one will be remaining. But not only you, but also all who hear me today. Now, there were other nations in there, too, that, that heard him today might become both almost and all together such as I am, mm -hmm. except okay. for these bonds. OK, cool. See, so what so is this that? Edomite? Paul said that this Edomite, he would when he said become a Christian, he wishes, what's a Christian? He wishes, he wishes that he become a Christian. No, 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 no. He said that's what he said. He says, I wish I would mean I wish that you would become a Christian. So, Mike, here's the problem. He also wished that all Israel could be saved. That don't mean it's going to happen. What the hell does that have to do but, with the price of tea in China? Let me read this real quick, Mike. Hold on. No, 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 no. Let me no, read no. this. I can't let you get away I with that. I let you read the right, verse. Go ahead. And now I'm going to respond. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Respond. So go Obadiah ahead. 1 and 18 says, there shall not be any remaining out of the house of Esau. And then Obadiah 1 and 9 says this. And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Mike is saying that this. So, so are you saying that this happened already? God judged those nations. That's okay, all he's talking show me, about. Show me in the Bible where both kingdoms came together to destroy the Edomites. You book no, chapter no, verse. The floor is yours. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. First, let me correct what you said about uh, Agrippa. Yeah, Paul, verse Paul verse. wished that the Israelites would be saved because they could be saved. That's number one. You're talking about he, he wished that they all be saved, but it's not going to happen. No, Paul wasn't wishing people to get saved that couldn't be saved. They could have been saved if they repented and accepted Messiah, but they, they did not. Right. That's no, number one. Michael, Hold what on. I'm asking you Hold is, on. is let me, I got a question. The price of tea in China. When was this verse you. fulfilled? Uh, that's the next. That's on. the only thing I want to hear. When was I this did, verse fulfilled? I did not tell you that that verse was completely fulfilled. That's an already, but not yet. If you Show understand, me already. Hold Show on. me the already. Hold on. Look chapter on. verse. Hold on. Historically, the Edomites were judged. Show me right? where well, the house of on. Jacob and the house of Joseph deep, did it. Deep. Slow down. I can't. God did it. <laughs> but oh, but what, what, oh, if you hold just on. allow. Hold, hold on. on. Hold, hold on. on. You got to. House of Jacob and deep. House of You ain't going to let me talk. Then come on over to my channel. Come house on over to my channel. Deep. You're not going to let me. Come you, you on gonna, over to my. You know, your I'm channel. Hold on. You okay, hold deep. on. Let, let, let's deep. establish. Come on. Let's establish deep. something real quick. Let's establish something. There's yeah. almost 4,000 people watching this, Mike. Good. You just said Good. that. I pray that some of them come to salvation. From the house of Esau, you said that there is going to be some remaining, even though and God. And when I tried to won. prove it, you wouldn't so, let. When I, try, when I, I showed let you, you go, it. I no, let you go no, to no, Acts 26. No, you didn't. I did yeah. let you go to Acts 26. I let you yeah, go but to Acts 26. You wouldn't let me explain it, though. When well, I start talking asking, about it, all they, I'm asking, you over talking because you know these texts, this text is going, is getting with you. Put your put your sixty second counter on and show us where the northern kingdom and southern kingdom either judged Esau or will judge Esau. That's all we want to hear from you, because Esau represents the ungodly. Esau oh. represents the profane. Oh Again, all right, let's you, keep going. Let's keep no. Moving. You, what, let's my keep sixty seconds not up deep. My sixty. Let's wait, my sixty. You said put your sixty. That's you my said. But that's my question. Hey, hey, hey. I can opt out. Hey. That's my question. I'm going to say this real quick. Out of it. No, I can hold opt on out. Deep. I don't, want, on I don't deep. want that no. question answered no deep. more. Deep. deep. If you're not going to be sincere with the text, I just don't deep. want it. I, I don't deep. even want that answer no more. Deep. I'm just going to go to my channel and do a laugh if you ain't going to let me talk. I thought we was going to have a respectful conversation. Mike, I'm not going to. I'm if 60 seconds is not a long time. 
if, yeah, if hold I on. Ask you hold on. I want to say I'm, I don't, hold on. I, I just, hold I'm just on. done with the BS the, answer. I have that right to no, do it. No, you, no, no, no. You stop him. What okay. you're showing, Deke, okay. is that I got to stop him from breaking this text down. Okay. Hold on. Hold on a second. Because so what, you're saying, what you're saying is, is Esau here is a, is not ethnic Israel. This is all the ungodly. So who is the house of Jacob and the house of Joseph that are destroying the ungodly? Can I show you? <laughs> can I? You cannot. Can I show you? Right. It's the covenant people of God. Remember the Gentiles, Romans chapter 11, are grafted in to the same olive tree. So the the what the Old Testament prophet understood through the lenses of the current covenant given to ethnic Israel, Israel must be understood in the light of the revelation given to the apostles that was not Ephesians 2. I wish you would share my screen. Ephesians 3, rather, which was not made known to the other nations. Our Obadiah 1 and 10 says they're getting destroyed for the violence against thy brother Jacob. Uh-huh. So they're getting exterminated. They're getting burnt up and destroyed and not any will remain because of the violence against their brother Jacob. So if this is talking about uh, the spiritual church here, Jacob, but it's saying, oh, your brother's going to get destroyed. So the ungodly is Esau represents the ungodly. Jacob represents the Hamites, Edomites, East Indian Christians. So the ungodly is going to get destroyed for what they did to the church. Deke, you have, there's a failure to understand the typological with the reality. Now I can break it down, but you keep stopping me. Now I'm not going to waste my breath to keep going back and forth. If you're not going to allow me, you don't have to agree with me. We already knew we were going to disagree before I came on, but at least let me get it out. <laughs> okay, well, being that we weren't even supposed to be talking about Edomites, let's just move on with 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 what we were already talking about. Can we do that? Because we got. I don't have a problem. Whatever we talk about, because I got to go shortly. Whatever okay. we talk about, I, I got your answers, but okay. but you don't want the people to hear the answers because you keep stopping me. Well, let no, me get it out. You might, to be honest with you, I don't have a problem with the people hearing it. Because I know okay. they're not going to believe it's, it. But me personally, stop it, me then. Can I finish? Well, let saying? my people hear it then. How about can that? I, let my people hear it. Can I finish what I'm saying, brother? Sure. I personally have an issue with what you're saying. I don't have a problem with the world. Mike, this video is going to stay up unedited. It'll probably get 60,000 views. I don't care. Good. Personally, I hope we get 60,000 so. Personally, I don't care. It just affects me when you're disingenuous with the text. And I have the right to feel like that because I'm sure you feel like that about me sometimes. The only thing I ain't I ain't doing you like I ain't stopping you, though. That's well, the difference. You, you, you I think you jacking up. I don't think you exegeting this text properly. OK, I don't think so, you... so my next question, because we're dealing with does Israel, ethnic Israel have any perks, privileges, benefits or rights over Gentiles that would prove that they're the chosen. They're still God's covenant people. I want to try to run this through and I, I'm, I'm trying to let you answer adequately so we can get off and you can share it and you can do a response video and everything. And I, everybody's I enjoying it. I want no them need. to enjoy it. So my question is, why is Israelites the light to the Gentiles and the Gentiles are not the light to the Israelites if they're equal and the same? According to Acts chapter 13, verse 47 it says, so the Lord has commanded us, the apostles, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, not, great question, D. Uh, they were a light to the Gentiles, they, but they failed at that. But but so they the were made. No, the, the, the believing apostles. Was that 60 seconds? Was so that like, 60 seconds? My bad, man. Go ahead. Come on, man. Lord in Christ. Go ahead. They were made a light to the Gentiles. They failed. Christ is the light, right? And now the church, every born again believer is the light. Christ says, I am the light of the world, right? And those who trust in him become the light. What's happening here in Acts chapter 13 is Paul, uh, uh, not Paul here, but but they're quoting. I believe, I believe this is Paul. But oh, this is Paul, that, okay. 
the I was believing to apostles, turn to. I just want to get this clear so you can let everybody know. The believing apostles failed at being a light to the Gentiles. No, you failed, Lee. And the rest no, no, of the, no, no, the, the no, Israelites. Says, who's right. the us right here, brother? Who's the us? Hold on. Hold on. Watch this. Let me read it. Let me read it. Please. Acts 13, 47. Right. Acts 13. And if I could start it, I'm, can you share my screen? Because yeah. I, I like to control my own verses. Go ahead. All right, thank you. I'm going to start at verse 22. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Now, on the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together. Remember, it was the Gentiles that asked them to hear the word of God. But the Jews saw the multitudes. They were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul, just like you disagree with Paul. So did they. Verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. Right. Christ came unto his own. The, it, the, that was the order. Right. The gospel came to Israel first. It was needful that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles for so the Lord commanded us. OK, so now Paul is quoting from the book of Isaiah 42. He says, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for the salvation of the ends of the earth. Initially in Isaiah, this prophecy was given to ethnic Israel. But now the new, the real people of God who are the believers, which included Paul, who was an Israelite, we, the church, we are the light to the Gentiles because we have the light of Christ in us okay, for the salvation of all the earth. So watch this last verse, this last oh, verse. Now, yeah. when the nations heard this, they were glad, glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life, believe. So we've got the nations believing, getting salvation right here. From whose Who's light? Paul? From whose light? Paul and the rest of the church. <laughs> okay. So is Isaiah chapter 60 an eschatological prophecy? It's both and. Both in. All right, we're about to go through this. We have to go through this again. Then Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine for your who's the your here? Uh well, the, the context is talking ethnically to, to the Israelites. Okay, ethnic Israel. I want everybody to hear this. Yeah. Your yeah. light has come. When does the ethnic Israelites get the light? When Christ came. But anyway, go ahead. When when Christ came and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness to people. So the people are the other nations. They're in darkness, right? Um, yeah. And so was Israel. But all right. Yep. No problem. But it said the light has come. OK, so but the Lord will arise upon you, the Israelites, and his glory will be seen upon you. So yeah. the Israelites have the light. The people are in darkness and the nations shall come to your light. When did the nations come to the Israelites light? It's come, they're coming to the Israelites' light because Christ came through Israel. So, okay, so, so when it says you're here, who is this? Because yeah. you just said it was Israel. Again, this is why context is important. Isaiah is let me, hold on. Let me just get it out. It won't be long. Isaiah is writing ethnically to the Israelites. The mm -hmm. fulfillment. Wait a minute. Remember, the fulfillment is coming through the true covenant people of God, which includes Israelites and Gentiles. Because remember in Acts 13, what we just read, Paul looked at the Israelites and said, because you reject it. See, they rejected it. So now anybody who's a child of God, a born again believer, one who has faith in, in God, the way Abraham believed God, in uncircumcision, as a Gentile, when he believed God, God counted it to him for righteousness. Now, any person in the nation that they believe, the light is still coming through Israel in that God brought the light through Israel. Salvation wow. is of the Jew, John chapter okay. four. But okay. Christ is the fulfillment of that. That's what I'm talking about. Not you, okay. D. Christ. Okay. Okay. Well, that better line up with the rest of this pericope. So it well, says, and it shall come to your light. And the you're here, you said ethnically Israel, your light 
and kings to the brightness of your rising. Kings yeah. are coming to the brightness of who's rising? Uh, the people of God. The people of God. Lift up your eyes. So this is talking about ethnic Israel and the people of God. Each verse. I just, I just okay, broke that down. No, just no, like you're, no. Let me say. Let me say. You're saying that this time about the multi-ethnic church in certain verses, and then other verses is talking about ethnic bloodline Israel. Verse four. No, that's not what I said. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you, your sons from afar. Who's this talking about? Uh, talking about the nations and the daughters, joints, and, their, and your joints. daughters shall be carried on the hip. Who's who's carrying these sons and daughters? Israel, Israel in the immediate context, true Israel in the actual in the actual fulfillment. Remember, prophecies obscure till fulfillment, and I can okay. show you that in the new covenant. Okay, verse five. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult because the abundance of the sea shall be turned unto you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. So the wealth of the nations are going to Israelite, bloodline Israelites only, or the wealth of the nations is going to the church, even though they're a damn $10 billion organization already. No, you, you talk about an organization. I'm talking about the people of God. See, faith okay. is in a, a, a worldwide organization. Anybody who has faith in God is a, is a born again believer. The church, Peter was a part of the church. Paul was a part of the church. He wrote to the church. John wrote to the seven churches. So come on, man. Don't, don't, okay, don't gotcha. complain. Don't Verse complain. 10, foreigners shall build up your walls. Yeah. Who are these foreigners and whose walls are they building? Non-believers, the believers. Okay, so the non-believers. Right. Are and, and again, remember, I'm answering the questions. Oh, wait a minute. One second. One second. One second. I'm answering the question as asked. But again, what you're doing is negating how to read prophecy. And, uh, and I know you ain't going to allow me. I'm negating when I haven't even gave my exegesis. I'm simply asking you. Well, well let's, just be, let's make it I'll known now it. that I haven't gave my exegesis either. I'm just okay. answering your yes or no's right quick. Okay. Now I can exegesis. So foreigners, foreigners shall build up your walls. You're saying in the kingdom of heaven, uh, <laughs> believers are going to have their walls built up by non-believers. Okay. No, and you're king, taking the wooden literal text. No, that's you, what you, you just you, said, brother. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you're making a, no, I'm answering your yes or no's. Yes, but I understand what that means, right? So almost like if it says, you know, it's raining cats and dogs. You say, Mike, is it raining cats and dogs? I'm going to say yes, but I understand what that means. That okay. means that it's raining hard, right? Okay. So foreigners shall build up your wall simply means that God will use the wealth of the nations to uh, establish his people. That's This is all apocalyptic. Okay, yeah. You got to understand language. Okay, language and culture is important. Okay, for in my wrath I struck you. Now, if this is the covenant people of God, the multi-ethnic church, when did he strike you guys then? I told you, immediate context was Israel. Ultimate fulfillment is the okay. true believer, which includes Israel and the church. Okay, verse 11. Your gates shall be open continually day and night. They shall not be shut. That people may bring to you the wealth of the nations, Gentiles, with their kings led in possession, He's going to say, everybody, that this is the church getting served uh, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve you shall perish. So any nation that doesn't want to serve the church is going to perish. Um, first and foremost, again, you got to you, you, you're reading that limited, limited. See, the ultimate fulfillment of these verses, Deke, is in Christ. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You got to understand that he is. He fulfills the Israelite promises because Israel, when he came, they rejected him and ultimately hung him on the Calvary's Mike, cross. Mike, how many Crucified. Mike, in John chapter six, verse 15, it says they wanted to make Jesus king. In John chapter 18, I believe they all bowed to him. In John 11, Caiaphas and the Pharisees said oh, they had, that he had to die. In Acts 21, oh, it says thousands of Jews believe. In Acts chapter 6, verse 7, oh. it says there was a great company of priests that believed. So, Mike, can you give me a percentage Wrong. on what you think, how many Israelites rejected Christ? Because that's a that's the, vast the vast majority. The vast majority. Okay. The Watch vast it. majority. Go, hold on. Right, can, right. can you share my screen? Can, can me, I break can, can, can I get a can I get a scripture in? Can yeah, you, you can rebut this. Can I get a scripture uh, in? Yeah, I'm, John, I'm, I'm proving no, that no, no, no. Israel did no. not reject him, and then you can rebuttal. John 6 and 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into the mountains himself alone. Let me get Acts chapter 6, verse 7. 
Yeah. Acts chapter Go six, ahead. verse. Let me bless you. Or seven and six, actually. Seven and six. And it says, and God spake. No, is it six or seven? Oh, my bad. Six and seven. Six and seven. I was right. Acts chapter six, verse seven. It says, uh, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Acts 15, we have what? The believing Pharisees, the church in Judea, 15 and 1. Uh, Paul and Barnabas, they uh -huh. went to the church in Judea, Judea, and they received the apostles, but there arose a sect of the Pharisees, which did believe. Let me get Acts 21. This is called a fully loaded clip. Acts 21 and 20 mm -hmm. says what? Let's keep going. It says, and when they heard it, they glorified the Lord, and they said, uh, you see how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are zealous of the law in John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 19. So many people of us, so many Israelites were following Christ. The Pharisees said the world is following him. John 12 and 19. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, perceive how you prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. That's how many people was following after Christ. A whole mob of people. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. And I could get 30 more scriptures on this, but uh -huh. I, I think this is a nail in the I'm going to debunk them all real quick. John chapter 11, verse 48. And what does it say? Let's start at verse uh, 40, 46. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered together the chief priests and the Pharisee a council and said, what do we for this man do with many miracles? If we let him alone, all men will believe on him. They knew how many people were accepting him. Yeah. And the Romans shall come and take Stop away both our place and nation. And one of them named Caiaphas being the high priest that same year said unto him, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us. Because he said, you guys killed him. And he said, forgive them as well. And in Acts chapter two, Peter said, even though you guys killed him, repent and be blessed. That one man should die for the people and that whole nation perish not. And this he spake not of himself. Why does it say not of himself? Because he was in the Holy Spirit. But being high priest that year, he prophesied. Can you prophesy without the Holy Spirit, Mike? Yes or no? <laughs> You're done. Yes. Jesus yes. died for that yes. nation. Oh, oh. Come okay. on. My turn. My turn. Oh, on. Come I'm on. I'm not D. done yet. I'm not Jay, done I yet. I want the same amount of time, D. Period. I got, you. I got you. I'm not done yet. You're not getting out of this. Yeah, because you, this is the worst ice of Jesus I've ever heard. Revelation 19. He said, You can prophesy about Christ without having the Holy Spirit. Revelation 19 and 10. And I horrible. fell before him. I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou doeth not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren and have the testimony of Jesus, which uh, Caiaphas was prophesying about. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Ugh, you're done. Let's keep going. John 11 and 52. No. Hey, D, and not D, for that nation D, only. D, hold D, on. Hold on. D, Let me read. No. I said I'm going to give you the same time. John 11 and 52. And not for that nation only. So he's not dying just for the Israelite, the southern kingdom who was there, but that also he should gather together and one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So do you not agree that Christ was going to die to gather together the children that were scattered abroad? Is it my turn? You're done. Go ahead. Share my screen, please. Share my screen. Yeah, I'll give you three minutes. I did that quick. No, bro, no. You gave me, give me, <laughs> give me till I'm done. I ain't going to be long, but I don't want to hear that when you just ran on. Yeah, like you got it. And you went to like 30 scriptures. No, I didn't, Mike. I went to literally five or six. You got it, though. Doc, Doc, something wrong with that math. Anyway, watch this. John chapter number one. This is John's words, right? He came to his own and his own did not receive him, but as many. So some did, but as a rule, his own did not receive him. But as many as received him to them gave the right to become sons of God. Right. Romans chapter number nine, verse one. I tell the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continual grief in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to the flesh who are Israelites, 
to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, service of God, promises of whom are the fathers and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who was over all the eternally blessed God. Right. Watch this. He is grieving for his brethren who are the Israelites. Why is he grieving? Because they're not saved. This is why he says in chapter number 11, they're asking the question, well, has God cast them away? Why are they asking this? Because they're not saved as a nation. They're not saved. They're, no, Israel rejected him. I just, let's go to Acts 13 again. Watch this. Acts 13. All we got to do is read. The Bible is clear. Nobody says all Jews rejected him. But they rejected him as a whole right here. Paul said here, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. Who Israelites. But since you reject it, look at that. Who Israel, you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Behold, we turn to the Gentiles. Israel as a nation rejected Christ. Period. Uh, okay. Yet, oh, wait, I ain't done. Wait, 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 wait. I'm almost there. Israel as a nation rejected Christ. Mm -hmm. And you went to passages. Let me go back to John real quick. Chapter number two. Watch this, because this is going to bless you, D. See, this, this is proper biblical hermeneutics right here. Watch this. Verse 23. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name. You read many verses like this without getting the context. Many yeah. believed. See, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he did. See, you can't take. See, words are uh, equivocal, not unifical. Just because you see believe doesn't mean that they were genuine believers. Watch this. Even though many believed, Jesus didn't commit himself to them. Why? Wait a minute, Jesus. These people believing in you and you rejecting them? No, because he knew what was in me and had no need that anyone should testify of him. These same people, all those people that you quoted who talked about they believed in the Gospels was the same people who said, give us Barabbas. Stop, Deke. Stop. You, that, that, that was horrible. I said, Israel rejected. If Israel had accepted Christ, judgment wouldn't have fallen in AD 70. When the temple was destroyed, there that's would have been no judgment. Wait, 70 AD was a part of Deuteronomy 28 curses, though. Yeah, that's what you say. That's not what Matthew said. Matthew didn't quote that. That is absolutely hold on, hold on, false. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you telling me? But anyway, hold on. Let's, uh, don't, yeah, change yeah, 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 don't change exactly, the subject. Exactly. Don't change the subject. Don't change the subject. You're going to get your hair buzzed, boy. Look at this. Isaiah stop, 60. Stop. Let's, let's go back to Isaiah 14. I never said, I just wanted to, let me just a quick response. All of Israel did not reject. I never said no Israelites rejected him. I'm saying the vast majority didn't. You're saying the vast majority the, did. I stop provided, it. The vast majority. Why, I, why was it only 120 in the upper I room? Respond, can I respond? <laughs> I, just let, I just gave you four or five minutes. I'm just simply giving a four, set, four word sentence. Some Israelites rejected him. Vast majority accepted him. You, believe, you believe the contrary. I think you're preaching falsehood so let's let the people take what they will back in isaiah 60 14 the sons of those who afflicted you shall come bending low to you who's this talking about in this millennial chapter uh it hold on it's talking about the remnant of israelites who will be saved right okay no so no the problem who afflicted the bloodline israelites people are going to come bowing to them uh, yeah, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Philippians chapter two. No, 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 no. You just said this is bloodline Israelites. You didn't. This is not Jesus hold Christ. On. You just Remember. said that this no, is on. bloodline Israelite, and those people who afflicted them are gonna come bowing to them. Who's bowing Wrong. to them? You just no. said that. No, hold on for a second. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you. Yeah, repass. Phrase it. No, I've told you this all throughout this discussion. Christ fulfills the promises God made to Israel. Christ okay, fulfills on. those. Hold on a second. Nobody put bowing to you. Chat, put a one in the chat. If Elder Mike Holloway didn't say that those were bloodline Israelites and people were going to come bow to them. Put a one in the chat no, if he said no. that. Put a two if he didn't. No, again, you, you misunderstand. Oh, I okay. said 
the immediate context, Isaiah is speaking to ethnic Israelites. I've been saying this the whole discussion. Okay. You've just been missing it. Well, There's a, there is an immediacy to the text, and then there is a, uh, a ultimate fulfillment. Okay. Well, I'm so surprised. A ones okay, in the keep, Israelite, on the Israelite page, I'm getting all these ones. I'm let's, so surprised. Let's keep reading. I'm so surprised. And all, and all who despised you shall bow down at your feet. Those okay. who despise the, who's the you here? Again, Christ fulfills that. And, and, okay, okay, do me this. Let me ask you one question. Uh, on that. Can I ask you one oh question on that? God. Let me ask you I'm one question on that. Hold on, so, hold on, hold on, do this. No, 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 no. No, I know you don't want no question. Show me, me that. Show me that where that's fulfilled in the new covenant. Show me the, show me. This, can I show you? Hold on. Brother, show show it to the, me in, in the book of the prophetic book we have in Revelation. Show it to me. Show me the people bowing to you. Show that's me that. Very, that's very, first of all, this that's is very biblical. Can I speak? This is an unfulfilled future prophecy. You even agreed. You so is Revelation. Now show it to me. Not so is the book of Revelation. Now show it to me everything, in Revelation. So everything in the everything prior to Revelation don't matter. It got to be in Revelation. Show it to me. Everything it prior to me. Revelation got to be in Revelation. No, what we have to do is understand it in the light of the apostles. And I'm showing okay, you that. Okay. All right. All right. So check this out. All right, wait. No, 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 no. Revelation no, no, 3 and 9. Out. Revelation 3 and 9. And I will make them. Who's the them here of the synagogue of Satan? Non-believers. Which say they are Jews and are not. Who's the so the non-believers saying they're Jews and are not? You're done. What are you talking about, Mike? Uh yes. Oh what are my you talk, what are so, you so talking about? Non-believers, there, there's non-believers saying they're Jews and are not. Hold on. Exactly. Okay, let's keep going. But do lie. Behold, are I will they, make wait them. A are they believers? Worship. You saying they believers? You said believers me. saying they Jews in there or not? You said They're show not believers. Me in the New Testament. It says, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy. Who's the thy here? Hold on. Remember, who's he talking to? Just scroll up. Scroll up to who's he talking to. Who is, Who is bowing down? down? Is somebody I'm, bowing down? Is somebody bowing down hold to on. another people? Yes or no? Hold, hold on. You said who is the thy? Scroll up. I'm only on one verse. That's not the question. I, I, I know. That's, 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 how it's, it's, that's how eisegesis is done. That's how eisegesis is done. It only focuses on one verse. But people who still the scripture in context, that we that go up. We go up. So scroll man. up. All I'm asking you to do is scroll up to see Brother who Mike. the audience is. You don't want to do that. Mike, that's a straw man argument. The point of contention is... No, you said you know they bow to the Israelites. Like this, man. How are you a Christian acting like this? Deke, this is incredible. It. You stop just said it. that nobody's Deke, bowing to nobody. Who is bowing to no, who? No, I said That's nobody I bowing to you. That's what okay, I said. Well, who is bowing to Roll who? Roll up. Remember, again, this is revelation. It's apocalyptic. Bowing before that feet simply means subjection. That's okay. what it means. All they right, will, so some people whatever, will be whatever, in subjection whatever, whatever, to the other. Right. I know yeah, it's whatever. whatever. I see you didn't scroll whatever, up, though. Whatever. I see you didn't scroll up, though, because you know you was cut. You said nobody's bowing at nobody's feet. Hold you on. Can, can I can I say something so, real quick? Hold on. So, Let's take a, take a breath is, for one second, D. Let me say one thing. So hold on one second. D. Right D. This hold on one second. Out of order. Can I say something right quick? D. So we've had we yeah. we've had for the most part a good dialogue, right? Now we starting to get all. You know, you ain't letting. You definitely you haven't been letting me finish the whole conversation. Is it all my fault? Is it all my fault, Mike? Uh, yes. Oh my goodness, but man. but this, anyway, but 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 that's cool. Listen, I'm not offended. I'm not offended. I'm not offended. I don't get offended easy. My point okay, is this: I knew what I was dealing with when I came in here. Hold, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. We done been continue. on here. Wait a minute, deep. We done been on here. Let me just get this out. Let me. We done been on here for two hours and about two hours and about fifteen minutes. Right. So I will say, if you want to take, a, give me a couple minutes for my summer. And let me summarize what I, my position is overall. Just about two minutes. You can summarize How yours. How about I'm this? not coming. And let then we done. Halfway. Let me meet you halfway. Let me let me uh, just get a few more scriptures and then I'll let you give your summary and closing statement. Under one condition. What Under one it? condition. After every question, I need 60 uninterrupted seconds. All right. You got it. If you if I don't get 60, then, then it's over.
All right, you got what my. You word. said earlier, I ain't. I don't know if I got sixty this whole. Well, maybe once. Well, or Mike, twice. Mike, you you were interrupting. I said me. maybe once or twice. You were you were interrupting me too as well. Come on, let's be real here. This is what happens during a heated discussion. It's called right. rapid fire. I, I'm speed. not. I'm not offended. I'm not offended at all. <laughs> I'm not offended at all either. It happens with two grown men. Cool. So, I'm with it. I'm not uh, offended. I, 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 you know, I want to. I want to. I want you to exegete for me. Ezekiel chapter 16. Um, can you see my screen? I can. Okay, verse 59 to 63. Let's deal with this, and then I'll just get a couple more, and we can end it like that. Go ahead. Now, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I'm, and I tell you what. We'll see. Now, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will give you what you deserve, for you have taken your solemn vows lightly by breaking your covenant. Hold on one second. Let me just pull it up in my Bible so I can. It's easier for me. One second. Put a one if y'all can see the uh, my screen properly, even though he's going to read it. Mike, I'm in the NLT just because uh, it just breaks it down simply. But either ver either translation is a good. It's reflecting the same. Uh, well, I don't think the NLT should ever be used for study. It's a dynamic translation, and it's it's good for uh, well, devotion, I'll, but I'll, not for study. I'll go but anyway, the, let me. No, no, hold on. Just let me get my Bible, Doc. It's all, I like my Bible. No, I'm playing. I, I said I can go to the ESV if you like. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good right here. Hold on. Ezekiel, what chapter did was that? Now I'm sorry. What what chapter? Chapter 16, verse 59 to 63 to the last verse. 69, verse 53. Can you, I mean, 59. Can you uh, share my screen, please? No, it, it, it's, my bad. Ezekiel 16, verse 59 to 63. I got it. Yeah, that's what I got. Share my screen, please. Mike, they want to call in and ask you some questions. Doc, come on, man. Go ahead. I don't, I'm not going to force you to stay. Go ahead. <laughs> it, it, it's not that I'm mad, but Doc, come on, man. Tell him come on, come on over to my channel. I opened it up. <laughs> I, I, ahead, open it up. I, I need a little control. For thus says the Lord God, I will deal with you as you have done. You despise the oath by breaking the covenant. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on, real quick. Um, just so you can understand why I went here, because. Are you you saying that the Israelites did God break the covenant with them? Hold on. I, I first of all, I, we what, what this is what this is called here is proof texting, and and I don't, I'm not even saying that. I, I know we going back and forth, so it's not like we can read the whole chapters every time. I get it, but but the you're questioning the time that you're going to allot me to answer this isn't going to fit your questioning. See, in order for me to properly answer you, I really got to delve into this and deal with the context. Well, I respect that answer, Mike. I already told you I'm not going to force you to answer the way I want you to. So right. if I ask you, okay. did God break the covenant with Israel and you don't have an answer or you don't want to an answer or you say it's too long to answer, then I'm not going to force you to answer it. No. So if you want to answer, you can. Did God break his covenant with the Israelites, that bloodline Israelites? No, this, this isn't what God is saying in this verse. This is no, saying not in that, that verse. Saying in general, did he did he break? God the didn't break any covenant. No. Okay. Okay. All praises. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant. I will remember my covenant with you in the days of your youth. I will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Then you will remember your ways and be ashamed when you receive your older and your younger sisters. For I'll give you your daughters, but uh, not because of my covenant with you. And I will establish my covenant with you. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, that you may remember and be ashamed and never open your mouth anymore because of your shame. When I provide you an atonement for all you have done, says the Lord. Yeah, right? that's it. Just when is God going to establish his everlasting covenant with the Israelites? Uh, he's already done that through Christ. And anybody, anybody who believes in Christ are made partakers of that covenant. Who's the atonement? Remember, when I provide you an atonement, we know Christ is the atonement. He is the one who atones for the sins of the world. And so he's done that. And this, which is why Paul as an Israelite was able to be saved. Peter, James, John as an Israelite was able to be saved. The uh, 2000 who were delivered on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter number two, 
Israelites, Jews, devout men from all nations, they were able to be saved. Why? Because the atonement has been provided. And anybody who has faith in Christ, they are made partakers of that covenant. Now, we understand through New Testament lenses and through the writings of the apostles that this covenant people is not limited to just ethnic Israelites. It's inclusive of ethnic Israelites, absolutely, but it's not limited to ethnic Israelites because anybody who has faith in God in the same way Abraham in uncircumcision believed and was counted righteous, they can be counted righteous as well. Okay. Um, the reason I went there is because it says he's going to make an everlasting covenant with them uh, mm -hmm. and, and that they are still the covenant people and, and to the exclusion of others. So when you read this, in any translation, this look at this point, Mike. It says, um, it says, verse 61, then you will remember with shame all the evil you have done. I will make your sisters Samaria and Sodom. These are two different two nations, right? Mm -hmm. It says to be your your daughters. So these nations are going to go from being our fellow sisters to daughters that's a possession look at this though mike even though they are not a part even though they are not a part of our covenant so why in any translation you can look at this why is it saying that these other nations are not a part of the covenant that he's establishing with israel well i don't think that's what it says at all because well, daughters is a term of endearment that's not a term of possession or slavery it's a term of endearment i, okay, I, I, well, I don't think it says that at all Okay, well, what about when it says that these other that Samaria and Sodom cannot be a part of our covenant? It doesn't say cannot be. What it's saying is really this verse really hurts your position B, because what this is saying is, although they aren't part of the covenant, I'm bringing them in. This is what this is saying. I'm making them daughters. See, this goes to what I read to you in Ephesians, even though that the promises were not originally given to them from an ethnic standpoint, these people are being brought in. A people who were not a people are now being called the people of God. So this is fulfillment of prophecy. This text hurts you, D. Oh, okay. So when it reaffirms in the very next verse, it says they're not a part of the covenant. And, but I will reaffirm my covenant with you. Yes, the you being all of you who are in covenant through faith in Christ. Okay, I'm sure now, you don't think. Uh, I'm sure you don't think Ju you don't think Judas is part of that covenant, right? He's well, an Israelite. We, I don't well, think we, you think uh, uh, Herod was part of that covenant. Well, he wasn't Israelite, right? Well, but well, anyway, is, any other is any of those Jews that died in unbelief, who rejected Christ, who led to his crucifixion, and they did not repent, I don't think you believe that they're going to be brought in to the well, kingdom like, and be made partakers you know, of that well, covenant. Sakari's stance on that is that the Israelites, two thirds of the wicked Israelites, are going to receive their judgment and damnation. Ooh, and be, that don't sound like most. Thank and, you. I'm, I and, appreciate that. But, and there they will be regenerated in the kingdom, which is a, another topic. But uh, will God ever flood the earth again? We can talk about that. If if He gonna do it, it'll be with fire, not with water. Not with water. Okay. So in Isaiah 54, mm -hmm. in Isaiah 54, the Lord says to Israel, He says, mm -hmm. just like the covenant I made with Noah. To give you guys to uh, never flood the earth, so will I make an everlasting covenant with you, the Israelites. Are you familiar with this in Isaiah 59 and 9? This is as the Absolutely. waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be robbed nor rebuke thee. And But it says, neither uh, shall the covenant of peace be removed, saith the Lord, that that I'm sorry, that has mercy on the uh, at this point. Like, so I'm just want to understand your position. What you're saying is that, yes, Israel is the covenant people with the exception of Gentile believers. And that makes them all the covenant people. No, what I'm saying is this. This promise is not has not been removed. Remember, the Gentiles were grafted in. Can I go to that verse real quick, please? Share my screen real quick. Yeah. It won't be Romans long. eleven. Romans eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Share my screen. I want to. I want to show this. Uh, Romans eleven. Absolutely. <clears throat> Got you. Romans eleven. And, and what's the what's the olive tree? Is the olive? Who is the olive tree? Hold on. We I will get to that in one second. According to the Bible, who's the olive tree? Uh, 
their, their texts that refer to Israel as the olive tree. All right, okay, verse so, number 11. Well, Hold on, so, you, hold on. You, can I at least read my verse? Come I'm on, gonna you, I'm gonna give you, but I want to ask this because I had it written down. If the Israelites are the olive tree and Gentiles have to be grafted into the Israelites, how are they not the chosen people? Why okay. can't you just be grafted into your own nation? Why do you have to be grafted into the Israelites? All right, let me respond. I'm gonna let this text go ahead, respond. Go ahead. You got it. Watch this. I say, then, have they stumbled that they should fall? He's talking about the Israelites, right? Because this, this proves what I said earlier. What then? Remember, I told you vast majority of Israelites haven't received, haven't didn't didn't uh, obtain. They rejected. it. Israel has not obtained what it seeks. But the elect have obtained it and the rest were blinded. The rest were blinded just that it is as it is written. Right. So then he goes on to say, this is the verse I wanted to get to. I say, then have they stumbled that they should fall? So is this an utter casting away? Is this an utter fall? Certainly not. But through their fall, to provoke them to jealousy, salvation, right? Yeshua has come to the Gentiles, right? Now, if their fall is the richest for the world, I want you to catch this. Their fall is the richest for the world. So, so the world here, these Gentiles, this the salvation has come to, is obtaining some riches here. And their failure, because they failed, as I kept telling you, riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. So, so this isn't utterly casting Israel away, right? Their fullness. So Paul is speaking of when uh, 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 Israel being restored. For I speak to you Gentiles, in as much as I'm an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh. All right, watch this. Let me, let me, I'm jumping down here because this is the verse I want to get to. I'm trying to uh, spare some time here. For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is holy. And if the root is holy, the root is holy. So are the branches. Now watch this. And if some of the branches were broken off, so God broke off those Israelites. He broke them off. And you being a wild olive tree, Gentiles, were grafted in among them and with them, became a partaker of the root. Remember, we just read above, the root is holy. And now Gentiles are partaker of the root and the fatness. If you understand language, you understand that the fatness has reference to the richness and all the benefits of the tree. They, they're they part of the root. You can't get no deeper than the root and the benefits, everything the tree has, the fatness of the olive tree that Gentiles are now a partaker of. Then he says, don't you boast against the branches. So I just wanted you to see here that the Gentiles who have been grafted in, they are a part of the root and the fatness. They get the benefits and all the richness, mm. the Gentiles. Mm. This is the text. Okay. That's incredible. Well, the, for those yeah, of you don't know, I think so too. Sakari teaches that the New Testament Gentiles receiving is, uh, salvation or Israelites. But again, that's a whole another thing. I just wanted to make our position clear on that. Um, so you believe that the church of, uh, of Rome is uh, Gentiles? I know the church of Rome is Gentile and Israelites. It's both. Is, Let me show you. Is, where is he differentiating it? Right here in Romans chapter 9. So he's saying here, watch this. Watch this going to Ooh, that's a great question, D. Great question. Watch this. What shall we say then that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith? Verse 31. But Israel, wait a minute. These Israelites, right? Nope. But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, they have not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith. So you've got Gentiles here who have attained and you have Israel who have not attained because right. they did not seek it by faith. Okay, let me respond I, to that. that. Let that's me respond to that. that. That's so the Israelite, what you're saying is that the Israelites were never called Gentiles before? What I'm saying is that Paul makes a distinction because between, there is a, wait, 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 wait. That's not I, what I asked you. I didn't say was there a distinction. I said, was an Israelite ever called a Gentile? Yes or no? Israelites were, had, were called the uncircumcision when they 
rejected their uh, law. They and they intermingle in with the other nations, but that's you the, yes or no question. Was the Israelites ever called not by yes or no. nations? Yes, it is. It, it, yes. No, 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 no. What they were called, they were called uh people who mingle with the Gentile. An Israelite was always is a, an Israelite. Is a Greek is a Greek a Gentile? Uh sometimes a Greek is a Gentile. Sometimes there are some texts that refer to. Uh, depending on the Greek word, so we can go there, and I'll show you the distinction between a Hellenist and a Grecian. Okay, right? there's it, a difference. Is it there's a con Elamite, distinction. Is an Elamite a Gentile? Well, I, I would need to see the text uh, okay. that you're talking about. All through the Bible, the Israelites are called Gentile nations. So no, they no all through the Bible. No, all through the Bible they are, and so there's always I been disagree. A distinction. So on our on but our Paul, discourse, but but listen, though, no. what Paul says here is he got Gentiles and Israel. So he's yeah. not saying Israel and Israel. He's no, saying that, Gentile. Well, and the, wait a minute, these Gentiles, watch this, just real quick. These Gentiles have attained the law of righteousness. Why are you still calling them Gentile? Why is Paul still calling these people who have attained to righteousness Gentiles? Come because on, man. The, th that's the middle wall of partition. You believe that's... No, no, that's broken down see, when you in Christ. Mike, do you see? Do you see right when I begin to talk? You tell me to hold on. All right, all right, you go ahead. Seconds in when I believe... All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We're interrupting. So again, um, that's a whole Gentile debate. There's plenty of videos on this channel to show that the New Testament Gentiles are Israelites. Let's just continue. Uh, on Berean TV, you said Isaiah 14 was fulfilled. Do you remember saying that? Are we are we leaving this here? Because I, I, no, I feel staying, like no, we're staying on on uh, <laughs> on who the chosen people are, who the, eth the ethnic bloodline, who the chosen people are, and who will have a the the, the hierarchy <laughs> in the kingdom of heaven. Hold so on, D. Berean D. TV, you, you said Isaiah 14. I We're said already, but not yet. Remember what I said? I said already, but not yet. That's what I said. You got the video. You said, yes, Romans, I mean, as Isaiah 14 is fulfilled. You can take it back if you want. I said already, but not yet. Now, I can oh, show you how it was fulfilled, Mike, but I also said not video yet. Where you said, yes, I promise you verbatim. I'm not lying. You said, yes, Isaiah 14 yes. is fulfilled. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. No, no problem. Because you it is already. You there, there's a, I, I know I'm not retracting anything because I know what I said. I did say yes, and I'm going to show you that if you want to go there. Okay. I'll show you. But I also said clearly, which is what I always say, that I'm not negating a future consummation, right, that's fulfilled in Christ. That's, and I always make that clarity. And I'm okay. sure I did then too. Okay. So in Isaiah 14, because what you told me that day, you said that Israelites are not the chosen. Now that we're here and we're no. fully <laughs> see, I can't even get nothing out, man. What a great Christian fruit of the spirit you're showing. I you know good me, and well you're you not questioning me, nobody's character. Well, I already told you straight up. We slap we we this is Sakari. We slap heathens all day, and you know, we're the zealots. So you're supposed <laughs> to be the one who's the fruit of the spirit, holier than thou Christian. So nah, if I didn't have a fruit of the spirit, I wouldn't be on here. So. Okay. So Isaiah 14 and one for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Right now uh -huh. and set them in their own land on, on Berean TV. You said the Persian error was a captivity and Nehemiah and Ezra says the same thing, right? They were in bondage. Uh-huh. Okay. And set them in their own land. So the Israelites are going to be chosen, set in their own land. Strangers shall be joined unto them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors, and it shall come to pass in that day, the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So my question to you is, Mike, if this happened already, and you said it was fulfilled during the time we came back from Babylon, why is it saying that we would have rest from bondage when this is fulfilled, but in the same breath, you'll say the Persian error was a bondage for them. How did they have rest from their bondage if they were in bondage? All right. Can I, can I respond? Yes. Share, share my screen if you don't mind, please. 
All right, here we're in Ezra chapter number one. We know Ezra through uh, Cyrus, the king of Persia, right? He received the command to go and build the house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Judah, remember, this is already but not yet, right? Notice who is among you of all his people. May his God be with him and let him go to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord of Israel. He is God which is in Jerusalem and whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place. This is the other nations here. This is in Israel. Help him with silver and gold, with goods, with livestock, besides the free will offerings for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. So here we have, Israel going back to their land, back to build the house of God, which is in Jerusalem, taking the free will offerings from the heathen nations and the help in gold and silver from the nations that they were captive by. Now, let me take you one more verse here. Watch this. Nehemiah chapter two, verse seven. Furthermore, I say it to the king. So this is Nehemiah. You know, he went back to build the walls. If it please the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river that they must permit me to pass through it till I come to Judah. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me timber. So now you got to provide the materials for the kingdom to make the beams and the gates, the citadel. So now guess who's financing the rebuilding of the wall and the temple, the heathen nations. This is the immediacy of Isaiah's prophecy. Watch this, which pertains to the temple for the city wall and for the house that I will occupy. And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of God upon me. Watch this. Then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and they gave me king's letters. And watch this. And the king sent the captains of the army and the horsemen with him. So now, not only are the heathen nations financing the rebuilding of the temple and the walls, the captains of the armies are going back with the Israelites to assist in the efforts to build the wall and the people. So as I said, this is why history is under is, is important when we talk about prophecy. The immediacy of the text was specifically about when those Israelites, the context, were, would go back to their land. Now, and last thing I'll say is this, like I said, already but not yet, Christ ultimately fulfills every promise in the when he comes back eternally, the consummation of all things to judge all the nations. And this is why this is why people don't know how to read prophecy. There's always an immediate context and a future context, which okay. is why we say already, but not yet. Okay. Man, okay, this now, text, let's, this let's, Bible is right let's, every let's, time let's, you look at it. It's crazy because I asked you after giving you over a minute, maybe a couple of minutes now, I asked you. You said the Persian period was a bondage. The Bible is saying when this is fulfilled, they will not be in bondage. So I'm asking you if this is future prophecy, then what part of this? So you're saying just, okay, now watch this. Ver, Isaiah 14 and one, read this slowly. And also too, you read that the, the king was helping them out. Did you know that the king was helping us out and laying heavy tax taxes on us for helping us out? Nehemiah five and four. Still others were saying, We've borrowed money against our fields and vineyards to pay the king's taxes. We had to give our damn homes and lands up to pay the heavy tax because he was helping us out. That's a cut. But to go back to Isaiah uh, 14, no. it says, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Who's Jacob here? Jacob represents the covenant people of God. Okay. And who's Israel? The covenant people of God. <laughs> okay. And set them in their own land. What land is this? In the immediacy of the context, it was Israel. I just showed you that. Okay, so in the media, and, and strangers shall be joined under them. The strangers were joined unto the Israelites? Yes, I showed okay. you. Okay, Wait, cool. I cool, showed cool, you. Cool. 
walk that the strangers the went back. And I'm going to be okay. off here in about five minutes. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So they cleave to Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. It says, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. Who were we captive to before the Persians? Again, the, before the Persians, they were captive to both the Babylonians. They were captives to uh, the um, uh, the Greeks. The Greeks? No, 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 not the Greeks. The Assyrians. Well, the Assyrians so, was the northern tribe. Yeah, but well, we weren't captive to the Greeks until after the Persian era. So it says, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. When did we take them captives whose captives we were? Remember the, the, the were they captives to the Persians at the time? Yes. Yes. Did did the Persians go back with them and finance the kingdom? Yes. Did they take them captive though, brother? Again, this is this is the problem. This is the problem with not understanding how to read prophecy, right? This is this is the problem with not understanding how to read prophecy, right? This is what what is called uh 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 what I would call parabolic language. Right. So in the same way, Israel went and built up their their kingdoms the same way the oppressors were building up the kingdoms of Israel. OK, See, well, how do we rule, they shall rule over their oppressors? How did they rule over their oppressors when they were being oppressed in captivity? Rem remember what I saw, said, Deke. I said there's always an already, but not yet. There's okay. a future. There's a future. I the did, future, but I'll do it again. The Hold Israelites on. Rule over their oh, oh, the Israelites who are a part of the covenant people of God ultimately when total victory happens in Christ. Christ is the one that fulfills every eternal blessing. That's what you got to understand. Okay. My last, let, make it quick. Uh, when did the Gentiles, according to Christ, stop becoming dogs and become the children? When they believe. But this lady believed and she was still called a dog. Uh, first of all, dog in the context simply means that they were not covenant people of God. OK, well, you said you and become this a covenant point, person when no, you no, believe. no, no. she believed no, no, no. that she was still called a dog. Yeah. In Ephesians, we're called fellow heirs, fellow fellow members of the same body. So well, every bad. Gentile is a fellow heir. OK, but I'm asking you, she believed you said you stopped being dogs when you believe you just said no, you, I no, said, no. When did the first of all, being dogs? This is, you uh, said, I, first Mike, of all, can, you, okay. can I get 60 seconds? Lord in Christ. I asked you, when did the Gentiles stop becoming dogs? You said when they believed. The text says this Canaanite woman believed, but was still called a dog. So you want to rephrase and repackage it? No. Let me let me let me say this. Remember, the new covenant was established on the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Galatians 4, verse 4 says, Christ came, made of a woman, born under the law. So at this time, the, the Gentile nation... Wait, can I finish? Can Don't I just finish? quote it, read it. To redeem right. Those who are under the law. Okay, so he came to redeem those who were under the law. Who was under the law? Can, hold on. I'll let you ask your question, but at least if I quote it, let me, let me make my point first and then if you want to ask that's fine you so my point is they were under the law this was before the death burial and resurrection of jesus christ this was before the holy spirit was poured out upon the new covenant church this was before the revelation that god showed peter that gentiles would be made come into the covenant when he saved cornelius in his household so this was before that I'm talking today when a person believes they become a covenant member of Christ, period. Okay. Fellow last, heir. Last, question, number two. last scripture, I promise you. This is my word. Um, who was Peter's epistle to? <laughs> Peter's epistle was to the church. <laughs> but it says to the strangers of the diaspora. Which exactly. Is for, which That's is only wrong. for the Hellenized Jews, though. That's absolutely wrong. Peter, okay. remember, again, this is where language comes into play. Wow. Peter uses, if you're well, going to let me answer, let me answer, Great. share my screen. Share my screen, right? Watch this. The language that is used here, the pilgrims of the dispersion, but then the diaspora here, what you got to understand is you got to keep reading in Pontus, in Galatia, in Cappadocia, in Asia, in Bithynia, right? These were 
predominantly Gentile areas, right? And so again, the, this doesn't exclude, let me be clear that this doesn't exclude Israelites because yes, there were Israelites that are part of these congregations, but not just Israelites. And, and let me just show you here, Peter uses the language of the dispersion. Remember, remember this, because uh, Peter wouldn't have been able to tell you what those 10 tribes were, just like you can, right? But watch this, in Acts chapter number nine, watch this. Then Saul, still breathing out threats, murder against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest. He got letters from the synagogues, right? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm in chapter eight, my bad, chapter eight. Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, great persecution arose against the church and they were scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. So they were scattered. There was a dispersing of believers. This was the church, the believers that Wait, were under chapter persecution. Was that? Chapter was that? Acts chapter number eight. Ooh. They were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. So these were the believers. When did, when did, when did the uh, salvation open up to non-Israelites? Uh, it then open. When did they find out? <laughs> right. They yeah. found out in Acts chapter. Well, they found out that they didn't have to convert or through proselyting to become Israel in Acts chapter number eight. When when the Samaritans right down here, therefore, those who were scattered went where everywhere preaching the word. And Philip went down to Samaria. And preach Christ. Okay, now, now here's here's why your scholarship is lacking so much. Stop what is the word it. diaspora? What is the word diaspora referring to? What, uh, what scattering people? What ethnic group of people coined that phrase diaspora? That was put I on told you. I told you that right. Peter employs the language of the diaspora to his covenant brethren, the church. This is okay. what y'all missing. Y'all trying That's to make me. that about Israel. It's That's not. Me. It's not right. The word diaspora. Any, any, even an atheist or historian can corroborate this. Diaspora is only referring to exiled Jews. Anybody can look that up. First Peter one and one in all these translations. I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So I'm going to ask you a question: Is Peter writing a letter to anywhere? outside of these nations right here this is who he said he's addressing uh those or exactly he's addressing those people there so what's okay. the problem okay so his letters are not for everybody it's for a specific people right n not no no I mean, no according Just, to, according no, to otherwise you can't even read it then because you weren't okay. in Pontus in Galatia and Cappadocia I'm not saying no. I can't read it I'm saying who is he writing to according the, to him? The I, that's exactly what I said. The specific direction was to those individuals in those areas, okay, right? The those... exile, the exile. So his letter, his letters are only to the exiles in these places, according to him himself. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with that, but we okay, just disagree cool. on who the who the scattered cool. are. Now let's look at the word diaspora here, and look what it says: dispersed, scattered abroad, scattered, a scattered dispersed. Thank you. Of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations, and look what be. Oh no, no, no! Go back up. Go back up. Go back yeah. up. Re yeah. be of the Christians scattered abroad among the Gentiles. Right. Thank now, you. Watch this. It's over. Now look at this. Look at this. When you look at every time it's used, let's see what the scholar says. No, no, no. The scholars oh, just oh, told you oh, it could be used this. either way, bro. You watch this. James one and one. Sojourn is far away. Okay, so cool. In the same, in the same James one and one. Who's his letters to? Same who's same James' letters to? No, wait, oh no, no, who's James' letters to? It says to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. So, who is James' yes. letters to? The 12 tribes scattered abroad. What's the problem? Okay. All praises. So, James is only writing the Israelites for one, and he's using the same word scattered diaspora that no. first Peter 1 and 1 is using. Hold on. Paul Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, the stranger <laughs> scattered abroad. These are exiled Israelites. You can look in the lexicon, you can look at the proof texts and precepts. Scattered Israelites abroad. No, you just looked at it. It Chris can apply to both. Exactly. You it's just applying, read it. Yes, it's applying to either Israelites who are in those lands or Israelite Christians. Read Go the back lexicon. to the definition. Go Read back the to your definition. No, yes. wrong, wrong. 
Go back. Hold on. So there's an A of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. I say mm -hmm. amen. There's right. a B of Christians are scattered these, among the... So are wait a minute. Hold on. Are these Christian mm -hmm. Israelites? No, what, no, that would be A. Okay. No, hold, no, no, hold no, no, on. No, no. It hold Israelites, on. It says Israelites dispersed. Hold on, bro. The B can I say something? Let me. Can believers. I say something? Does it say? Hold on. Does it say that? Go back up, man. Go. You rushing? Oh, I'm I'm you you, you cut by your own your own I'm tool. You every time this is used, this word is used three times. Right here, when Christ said, "Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that he yeah, that we bro, shall not find that's him?" That's equivoc equivocation fallacy. Equivocation fallacy. That's not how we do hermeneutics here, bro. Oh my goodness. Context is king. Oh my goodness. That's the equivocation foul. You okay. can just because okay. it's you, it could be used in 10 other places to refer to Israel. It doesn't mean that in this place it automatically has okay. to refer to Israel. That's let's, equivocating. Okay, well, let's prove it. Let's prove it. Is the church prove a race? What? Is the church a race? Bro, yes. Is the church one race? Yes. The, the church, church is, is one race. Hold on. Hold on. There's only one race. That's the human race. And the oh. church is a race because we're a race of Hold believers. Okay. okay. Now watch this. Stop. watch this. Watch this. Come on, man. What is your, when you go and check a, your job application and it says, what is your race? What do you check? Humanity? <laughs> stop, stop, nah. stop playing, Mike. I know when you, you ain't comparing the Bible with a job application. Stop you, it, dig. Stop. Go, when you you go, comparing the job go, application go. with the Bible. Come okay. on. Are, are Chinese a race? Uh, they're in ethnic. They're in ethnicity. Okay, cool. Watch this. Watch this. Let's pull this up. Doc, yo, yo, yo. Dictionary just answered the question. No, let's, let's I, don't, I don't know why we even fighting here. There, who's there's the two, last, two applications. We got to take the meat off the bone here. So, who's the holy race here in Ezra nine and two? Ezra nine and two. The Man, holy race. It, hold on. It's everybody who are part of Israel. Let me ask you this: Was it was Ruth a part of that holy race? She was called a Moabite. Was Ruth a part of the holy race? She's Ruth the Moabite. You can't be an Israelite. I, I, I Moabite. didn't say that. I didn't no, say no. That, well, wait a minute. Oh, Ruth wasn't holy. Ruth wasn't part of the holy race. She's not a part of a share holy my race. screen. Let me bless can you. you. Be, can you be an Israelite? Can you be an Israelite? So a woman, so a woman could be an Israelite. A woman, a, a, a Moabite woman can turn into an Israelite. She said, Your people will be my people. Your God, hold on, hold on. Your people will be my people. Your God will right. be my God. Yes. Okay. What she still That's called a Moabite. Even though she was living among I didn't Israel, say she wasn't was a Moabite. She... Okay. But so I asked, was she a part of the holy race, though? And the answer is yes, which is why she was qualified to be in the lineage of Christ. Absolutely. Can you Where share my I... screen, please? Oh, okay. Okay. Let me finish this. Let me finish this. <laughs> Let me Doctor, finish. Win. You're not no, going to win this one. Doctor. You're going you're going to go to Matthew 1. It's she's No, Rahab I ain't going to Matthew 1. There's Rahab the harlot there and there's Ruth the Moabite. Just because Both of them are part of the holy race of people. Theology, they are not Okay, so you could be an East Indian and a so-called African American at the same time? Uh yes. Oh my goodness. You Chris Are you are you an American? Are you an American? I said Are you are African, you an American? An African and a East Indian at the same time? If my if my if I had East Indian roots, let's say my grandmother was East Indian. Right. But let's say uh, uh, that my mom married a black person and we, I was born in America. Yes, I'm all that. Absolutely. Oh, goodness, man. Are you American? Yes. American is not a race. Uh, America is a country or a nation. It's called the United States of America. Get smart, bro. Uh, Come on. Romans 9 nah, and 5. No, no. Y'all just on that race. F foolery. And from their race, what race is this? Okay, listen. It's talking about, in that verse, it's talking about the ethnic Israelites. Now, again, okay. what you're okay. doing here, this okay. is what you're doing. I see why you 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 uh, go to these verse. You 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 jump around versions to find the wording that you like. No, I'm going to show you how to do it right, saying, though. I'm going to take no, you to the Greek. Brother, I'm going to take you to the, the original language. Hold saying, on. You are saying that there's only one race that's not uh, according to the Bible, that's ultimately, not according to anthropology or anything like that. So okay. it's in their race. Now, when you go to 1 Peter 2 and 9, the multi-ethnic church, you've been hollering and yelling about multi-ethnic, multi-racial mm -hmm. church. Now you're trying to say the church is one race because you know you're about to get cut. But you are a no chosen way. race, singular, a chosen race, singular, oh, a royal priest, a holy nation. Is the church one nation or comprised of many nations? Uh, both, 
because okay. we all remember, remember, okay. I read, remember, let me respond. I read the verse in Ephesians that the middle wall of partition has been broken down and the two become one. And it uses the, the Greek word palotia, which is the word we use for politician. It has reference to that we are one citizenship, one race of people with equal rights biblically. Absolutely, bro. You gotta understand okay. this. A nation and I show you that. Flag, this is why you gotta flag, this, this is why you gotta know land, the language. A, a nation has a flag, a land, and, and a language. Where is that a Bible of the church? <laughs> where's, where's the, the where, where's that in the Bible? Where's the nation of the church? It's, it says the word nation. Where's the uh, nation of the church? Uh it is I, I, share my screen. I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna share. Yeah, exactly. Share my screen. You want me to show you? Share my screen. Share my screen and let me show you. I'm gonna give you this last. Oh, yo, I'm gonna give you. You don't want me to share my screen. I'm, I'm gonna give you this last rebuttal. You got 30 seconds, and we're done here. We're uh, done. Third, can I can I at least get two minutes, please? You, know, you can get 60 seconds, and we are done here. Enough of the Christian white Jesus lies in here. What when? See, go ahead. Go. When when I say white Jesus, if you see? believe in Christianity, it's a white supremacist cult. So we're Stop done. Stop it. it. We're the done cult with it is like the Sakari. Okay, you got my screen share. Let me just read. Watch this. For you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. See, this is where our kingdom is, the heavenly, to a numerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. See, I don't care about this ethnic registry down here. My registration is in heaven. To God, the judge of all, to just me and made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood sprinkling that which speaks better things than that of Abraham. People. This okay. is our uh, nation right here. But one, one more verse, real quick. And I know I gotta respond. now I got to respond to that. I don't Go have ahead. no problem with you responding. Go ahead. Uh, I don't have no problem with you responding. Galatians chapter number four. Watch this. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai. I showed you this on, on Berean TV the other day. In Arabia. Notice Paul corresponds Mount Sinai with the bond woman Hagar and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above, the one I just read, where our citizenship and registry is, is above and free, who is the mother of us all. See, we've got a new registry. This is why you can don't have to be born in the land to be considered born in the land because we believe in Jesus Christ. All right. Okay. Go ahead. What do you mean by heavenly Jerusalem? What the Jerusalem that is not earthly Jerusalem. Let's, <laughs> let, let's start right there. Hold on. I'm just going to read the verse. Hold Where on. The Jeru it's it's not it. the Jerusalem, which now is. That's go the one y'all trying to get back to. Okay, right. Jerusalem, which now is. That's the one y'all trying to get back to. So I'm telling you about the Jerusalem. Jerusalem. That's, that's what the text says. The okay, Jerusalem, which now is and Jerusalem above. OK, got you. So when the Bible says he's going to bring the Israelites back into their land, and there will never, ever, ever be the land he gave their fathers, and it will never, ever, ever be plucked up in. What's Jerusalem is that? It's not. It's Jerusalem that will descend from heaven to. And I showed you that too. Can I show you since my hey, screen's still on, up? On, wait, Watch this. Just, Let me show you. Let me show you. Hold on, brother. I did not hear what you just said. You were stuttering because okay. you're confounded. I'm asking I, you. The Bible hmm. says. Ain't no, I, I ain't broke a, I ain't broke a sweat, I ain't broke a sweat. I'm, I'm cool as a cucumber. I'm cool as the backside of a pillow. All right. right. Ain't, ain't, ain't no sweat going on. That the Israelites would get the land of their fathers. That's the actual geographical low earthly locale and will never be uprooted there. So right. which because Jerusalem the, is that as it pertains to the book of Hebrews? I'm about to show you. Hold on. Watch this. I'm about to show you. Thank you for sharing my screen here. Watch this. Romans chapter number four. Uh, hold on. One second. One second. Thank you for your patience. Okay. I, I didn't go far enough right here. Okay. Here we go. You ready, Deke? All right. Here we go. For the promise, remember, who's who's the fathers that we're talking about? Well, it starts with Abraham. And the promise that he would be what? Heir of the world. See, again, y'all stuck in the typological without understanding the fulfillment. 
Abraham ultimate promise was heir of the world, which is why his seed would be numbered as the sand of the sea. All them folk can't sit, uh, fit on that little strip of land. Right. Okay. <laughs> can't so, fit a, the, you know, so Palestine where, no bigger where, than where, Delaware. Where, Hold on. It was, it was to Abraham through his seed. So the ultimate promise, y'all gotta get, y'all gotta learn how to read the old Testament and light a new covenant revelation, the heir of the world. It's not just about that little strip of land. that's no bigger than Delaware. Let me ask you a question. Where are Christians dwelling at in the kingdom of heaven on earth? Both and heavenly place yes. right now. We're Both dwelling and. in heaven. Yeah, Both absolutely. And. Right. Okay. So wait, so wait, so wait, in kingdom of heaven, it says that the Lord is going to dwell in Israel. Ezekiel 37, it, uh, the Davidic Messiah will take us back to our land. Jeremiah 23 right. we won't be plucked up. We'll live there forever. So some believers will be living on the earth and some believers will be living in heaven. Watch according this. to your understanding. Nope. Watch this. Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and first earth had passed away. Mm -hmm. And also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. We just read about this coming down out of heaven from God, prepared mm -hmm. as a bride adorned to her husband. Notice I say a both and. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle, uh oh, feast of booths of God is with men. That's and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Okay, gotcha. Uh, let, me, let me share my screen real quick. I'm going to respond to that and I'm going to try, try my hardest not to uh, respond to any more or we're going to be here for another three hours. So verse, tw verse 21 and 10 says, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the holy city. What holy city is this? New Jerusalem. Is this a actual city, like a physical city, or a people? Uh, it's a it. Well, it, it's both and, right? The the oh city, the city is made up of people. Okay, so there's a uh, actual structure, and then people in it coming down out of heaven. Uh, yes. Oh my goodness. Okay, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. It's ready. How many holy cities are there? Uh, one. There's only one, one new Jerusalem, one new Jerusalem. Don't get me wrong. There was a natural holy city, which was earthly Jerusalem, which is in bondage even until now. Galatians yeah. chapter four. We just read that. OK, gotcha. Now watch this. So it has all these Jews and it had 12 gates. Right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. The 12 sons of Israel were inscribed. Uh -huh. These three gates, three gates, three gates. Yeah. 12 yep. apostles, which uh -huh. you admitted Gentiles can't be ruling. Uh, and Stop it. I didn't say spoke that. with me. You did say that. had a measuring rod. And he measured the city's walls. Now watch this. The city lies four square. It's length the same as the width. And he measured the city with his rod, 1200 stadia. Do you know how long 1200 stadia is? Yes. And it's symbolic, bro. Okay. Right, so give me the symbology of this right here. Why is it saying 12,000 stadia? Because because 12 is the number used in Revelation. There were 12 apostles. It's 12 tribes. And 12 times 12 uh, uh, oftentimes refers to the complete completed work if you do them if you do the uh hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me the book chapter hold verse that says 12 represents the completed work hold on hold on for a second i'm, I'm about to bless you here we're we gonna bless you right here mm -hmm. there were 12 disciples there were 12 apostles there were 12 mm -hmm. uh tribes of israel hold on i'm trying to find it. verse 21 verse 17 watch this and and if you if you do the coordinates that is a perfect cube it is can you tell a me why can you tell me why it, it symbolizes? Remember, that's why you got to context is me, important. Why, Revelation you, chapter one says he's speaking in signs. This is a symbolic number. Mike, this is my first time muting you. This is my first time muting you. I just want to get this out so we can conclude. Can you please tell me why is 12,000 times 12,000 equals 144,000? And the and the wall, the structure is fourteen hundred miles long. Is it literal? You said literal. That means there is a fourteen hundred mile high long. It can't be literal. This is representing the hundred forty four thousand. So please answer that in light of what I just said. Please go ahead. Uh, it is representing the hundred forty four thousand when you understand who they are. They are the complete people of God. Now watch Mike, this. You said the one forty four thousand was ethnic wait, Israelites. Wait, wait a minute. No, you no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, can, let me say something. Let me speak. 
Deke, no, you didn't let me. If you rewind, you're going to find that you cut me off and didn't let me finish. We got on something else. When I was trying to answer, we never got back to the 144,000. We Hold never on, got listen, back like, because you, you and your constant cutting me off. We we went another route. We the saying 12,000 stadium. Listen. Because, because 12 is the number used in Revelation. There were 12 apostles, there's 12 tribes, and 12 times 12 uh, uh, oftentimes refers to the complete, completed. Uh, we're gonna bless you right here, right? There were 12 disciples, the importance that important. I just want in the in the walk in the 44,000. I don't hear it, Jay. Please answer that in light of what I just said. Please go ahead. Uh, it is representing 144,000. When so you Mike, under, so no, Mike. no, you cut. No, wait, 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 wait. You cut the sentence. I said when you I, understand who they are. Okay, See, okay, Doc, okay. Oh, you so, can't so, cut the sentence halfway. So, I'm, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you the floor to try to redeem yourself. You <laughs> said that Me. the holy city represents the 144,000, Mike. I and said when ago, you understand who, who they, they are. are. Now, Just an hour like ago, us. we read Revelation seven. And you said the 144, you agree with the Bible for once that the 144,000 was ethnic Israelites. Deep. Mike, you know what, Deep. brother? It's been real. Deep. It's been real, Mike. You, it's been real, Mike. Can can I can I can I say something in closing? Nah, yeah, go ahead and close out, man. Go ahead and close you out. Say it something got, in closing, it, it and I'm gonna leave. Heated. It got a little heated. Like I got, I do got That's one last I'm question. Gonna, did wait a minute. Did you, did you go to seminary uh, school? I'm gonna give you your closing. I'm not gonna kick you okay. off. Right, you. Right, did you go right, to seminary right. school? Uh, I have been to seminary. I got you. See some uh, diplomas behind me. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, however, I, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I was. Let me, let me finish answering. <laughs> I was a biblical teacher. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and a minister in the word of God 20 years mm -hmm. before I stepped foot in a seminary. Okay, what seminary college did you go to, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I've gone to several. I went to Moody Theological Seminary. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the Michigan campus. I went to uh, Manthano Christian uh, Bible School, which is here, and ultimately uh, completed my degree work in at uh, Grace uh, theological seminary and mm -hmm. I am currently a student I'm a lifelong student currently a student at uh Cornerstone Theological Seminary in co in coordination with Grand Rapids Theological uh Seminary okay so, so at all those degrees and all your teachers and all your doctrine that you've learned would you say that it was mostly white white people teaching you the Bible uh first and foremost you don't go to seminary to get your doctrine you go to seminary. It's like gaining information, right? Okay. Was it mostly white? It, it, you you get your information. Uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, I uh, when it comes to who's giving me the information, the question is: Is the information valid? Once you start strawmanning on what color the person had to be, no, nah, I'm come not strawmanning. No. I'm just asking a simple no, question. There were black professors. That. There are white professors. My current seminary, the dean of the area that I'm under, the program that I'm in is a black man. Mike, did most of your information come from white people with all the years of your college? Uh, no, the most of my information <laughs> came from factual information. Again, you straw man, ahead, you, what you doing is you feed, you feed in the flock, right? Cause y'all like that, you know, bro, the white man, let's get the white bed, all the meat, like white man. You the just, white you, you're not doing nothing but, but feed in your, your crowd, right? No, the question true, is, though. is that's it true, factual? Though. The that's question true. is, is what I'm saying factual? That's what what the color don't matter. Black folks can lie and white folks can lie. I just so color, a simple question, Mike. I mean, right. Well, guess what? I don't look up any book that I buy, any resource that I study. I'm not looking to see what color is the author. I'm well, why, are you so ashamed, why are you so ashamed as a black man to, sit, to say that you learned all your new? You straw me in it. Let me say my closing. Dude, you straw me in it. We're getting off track. Let me say my closing. I just want to get personal for a second. Can we do that? No, 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 no. We set no, the doctrine you, aside and get you, personal. You straw me in it. Doc, it no, has nothing to no. do with the doctrine. I just want to know. I, I think it's probably best to leave. We done had a decent conversation. Okay, I'm ahead. not offended. You not offended. Let's leave it at that. That way we yeah. leave the door open for a, a part two, part three, whatever. You know what I mean? Hey, you, we know don't what we're on? you know what part we're on, Mike? We done did, at first, when, <laughs> the first time I met you, we did the new covenant, and then we did, uh -huh. we did something else. It's been some years, though. It's been some it's been years since we've been together. 
I came on uh Berean and then I came yes. on I came on Amaya. I think this is our our sixth go around right here. But some of those was just little small exchanges. This is probably the third. This is the third long exchange we've had. All praises. Well, go ahead. I'll let you conclude, brother. All right, listen, all I'm going to say is this. You know, my prayer is that somebody was edified by the conversation. I'm not leaving with no straw man attacks or anything. My prayer is that somebody was edified by the conversation and that somebody comes into saving faith in the true biblical Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Blessings. Appreciate the conversation. We'll talk to you all on the next tab. All right? All right, brother appreciate Mike. We appreciate you, man. Get out of that false right. doctrine. We still love you. Shalom. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> all praises. Well, here's what I'll do. Um, listen, for about 10 minutes, if there's some other Christians on here, Christians only, please. If there's some Christians who want to come on here and feel like they could they could do a better job, then uh you can click the link and we could we could have a discussion. I got about 20 minutes, maybe. 20 minutes, maybe. Um, try to be precise and concise and uh, pray for our brother Mike. That's it. We'll give some other Christians who think they could do a better job than that. Come on here and click the link. Let's have a peaceful and respectful dialogue. Uh, again, like I said, I don't have any contention with brother Mike. Is it all white supremacist false doctrine? Yes, but as a person, I don't have anything against brother Mike. And me and Mike going to have a lot of conversations throughout the years. By the time we're both done, we're going to have about 20 conversations under our belt. <clears throat> Somebody at the door. Hit the door. So let's see who we could uh get on here. I'll give you guys, because I know y'all was talking about a Q&A. Um, you can come on here or you can post it in the chat. Uh, either way is fine. Anybody can hit the link though right now. All right, a little more time. Because I seen there was a lot of lot of people in the chat acting like they could do better than Mike. I seen a lot of Christians in the chat saying that they could do better than Mike, that they that they have more breakdowns and scholarships than Mike. Well, you guys have your chance right now. If you thought I was wrong, you have your chance right now. All right, we got a brother on here. Somebody's in the back chat. Let's put this screen up. Let's put the screen up. We're about to bring you on. Where's the screen at? Okay. Uh, Hood Crusader, you got the floor. Hood Crusader. Hey, hey yo, I'm just listening, bro. I'm just listening. I came late. I don't know what y'all talking about. You said, what? Are you a Christian? Yeah, but I, I came late. I don't know what y'all talking about. Well, we were talking about is bloodline ethnic Israel still God's chosen covenant people? Oh, I believe I believe yes, but I believe the church is um has a, a different promise. Different promise. Well, his stance was that uh bloodline Israelites teamed up with believing Gentiles are basically the new covenant people and they're going to oppress and be an authority and have power over other nations and help us help us enslave their people for enslaving us so uh that that's his stance but you know if according to us not even us according to the bible the body of christ is the spiritual temple the spiritual temple is the holy city and even in acts chapter 7 it says the church was in the wilderness with moses so it's not a new concept to church. You understand what I'm saying? Hold on one second, brother. I'm going to pull you right back up. All right. We got Carnell Manuel. You was typing a lot, brother. What's going on, man? You antsy? You got to come on here and yell and scream at me or what? No, I'm not going to do none of that, brother. What's going on, brother? You got a question, comment? Go ahead. Well, let me first of all, let me say this. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if you remember me or not, but I was the one that contacted you on Facebook Messenger. And I said, hey, man, Elder Mike wants to have another dialogue with you and your your response was you said man man we've already dialogued two times a third time is unheard of i said man it'll be like the thriller in manila you remember that conversation <laughs> i don't remember that but yeah oh, it yeah, went yeah. up it went up this was probably the most people that besides when i got the jewish rabbi on and i also had who else did i have on a couple jewish rabbis and yeah. 
when I talked about uh, Russia and Ukraine in the Bible, I usually get these type of numbers. So it's good that some traffic came through. And I hope both sides got some good information. But did you have any questions for me or anything you wanted to say besides that? Yes, 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 I did. As a matter, matter of fact, uh, first of all, I want to say just, uh, thank you for allowing me on your platform. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'll be real quick. I know you only have a few minutes. So uh, I believe it's like a two-part question. So uh, the, the, the 12 gates, right, in mm -hmm. Revelations. Mm -hmm. With the twelve tribes, which one of those gates are uh, will Noah go? Is Noah going through? Right. So that that's a good question. Uh, which is why you have to understand that God had a chosen line before He chose the twelve tribes. So when you look in the Bible, it says these are the patriarchs. These are the fathers. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The chosen line from Noah, Seth. I'm sorry, Adam, Seth, Noah, Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. I may be missing one or two, but there was a chosen line that the Lord already told us he was dealing with. So when you look at Revelation 21, a lot of Israelites, they say that that's, if you heard me, I said that represents 144,000 and even Mike agreed. And I believe, you know, that's my man, but he cut himself right there because earlier he said the 144,000 was bloodline Israelites. The Bible says that 12,000 from each tribe. And then when you look at the measurements of the Holy City, it's dealing with 12,000 times 12,000, which is uh, when you do the difference of an area, when you know a little bit of algebra, it represents the 144,000. They're the ones coming down. So that has nothing to do with an actual structure or even anything outside of the 144,000 as it gets to spiritual uh, numerology. Okay, so it, it, it just uh, real quick, this is actually not my second part of my question, but you just touched on 144 real quick. So I just want to say this or ask this. So what do you feel that 144,000 represent? Do you feel that uh, only 144,000 is going to be in the kingdom or what's your take on that? That's a good question. And when you're in these rapid fire exchanges, you may not be able to fully adequately you know, give your understanding because it's going so fast. Mm -hmm. But we believe that the 144,000 is going to be the governing body of okay. Israel. Yeah, we're agreeing on that. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. So here's the last question. Um, so, um, like, let's say you had an Israelite and 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 uh, so-called Gentile, right? Now, let's say the Israelites don't keep the law, statute, law, uh, commandments the law statutes and commandments of the most high and let's say uh, a gentile doesn't either okay well will either one of them will the, will the will the israelites still make it into the kingdom um real quick so lucky i had to, I, I was sending a text please forgive me say that one more time okay so so well basically my question is just scratch that basically my question is well, well, so you believe you believe Gentiles uh, will be uh, in the kingdom as well, right? You believe yeah, Gentiles believe, are grafted in, right? I believe I, I don't believe a Gentile can be grafted in. We believe that the Gentiles in Romans 11, when you look at the full context and the totality that is talking about Israelite foreigners being brought back into the fold. Uh, but what I do believe is that outside of Esau, Outside of the Edomites, the Edomites are going to be exterminated, according to um, Obadiah 1 and 9, Obadiah mm -hmm. 18. So we don't believe all Gentiles will be in the kingdom, but there will be some Gentiles in the kingdom and that will be living peaceful. And, you know, the Most High will have compassion on after all the nations serve their judgment, which is a thousand years of captivity, which is why I went to Jeremiah 30 and Isaiah 14. So, yeah. um that that's what we believe after they serve israel and get their judgment the world will be at peace it'll be a paradise um, all the nations will be happy but that judgment and prophecy has to go first or you know god is a liar basically yeah okay well you know what um i appreciate your time you know for uh answering the questions honestly and truthfully i didn't feel like he was trying to duck a dodge or anything like that so i, I really appreciate that and i do want to say that one last thing that's not a question before i go i want to say 
you know, uh, I'm praying for, for all you guys, and I hope you guys are praying for us as well. And I want to say it's, it, it'll be really something to think about if you get to the judgment day and find out. Well, the most high cut him off. The most high cut you off, brother. I don't know what you was getting ready to say. <laughs> He was going to say, if you get the judgment day and you find out you're not Israelite, <laughs> probably. Uh, you wanted to play hey, some? Hey, then I'm done. <laughs> That's all listen, that means. Listen, I'm, the truth, and what people got to understand, these emotional people out there. Listen, if we're bro, not the Israelites, the truth doesn't change. <laughs> all right. You know what's crazy, though, man? If you guys had to go through what I just had to go through for three hours, there's no way that you guys would have been able to say, I don't want to do another debate for literally three weeks. But let me tell you I just man. have to go through hell. When, when, you're, when you're dealing with Brother Mike, what, what's Mike's title? He's minister. What is he? What, what is he? Apostle Mike? Oh, he's minister Mike. Minister he's Mike? Registered in, he's registered in heaven, Mike. Registered in heaven, Mike. <laughs> when you're dealing with that brother, man. <laughs> oh, my God. That, he, that brother loves going on a, a filibuster. He likes to just, he's so, pre he just always got to preach a sermon on every, every question you ask him, he had to preach a sermon on it. He couldn't just say no, yes. He had to preach a whole sermon and that'd be the problem with, with, with our people in Christianity. You want to just preach a sermon instead of just getting right to it. Let's just get down to business. This ain't sermon preaching time. This is, this is iron sharpening iron time. So yeah, that, that, that was crazy. Yeah, man. Hey, thank you guys for praying for me. I know you guys are in the chat going in on them, man. You know, I was trying to, somebody said minister of confusion. I was trying to suffer. You know, the deacon got patience. They talk about we ain't got no fruit to the spirit. Any mm -hmm. Israelite would have kicked him off. I text aside and said, I'm ready to let him go. Hey, listen, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have turned up on him after that first hour, that first 60 minutes. You would have got to barking. The <laughs> hey, little turtle would have came. When I get to, <laughs> what they say? When I get to sparking, they be barking like pit bulls. All right, brothers, let's uh get you, let's get you plugged in, man. So we yes, can sir. go ahead and real oh, quick. Though, you guys want to jump him? Hey, Matthew, you got a question, comment, or smoke? Matthew, you're live. Matt, <laughs> Matt, you're live right now. Matt, What's up, Keith? Matt? Yeah, we hear you. What's going on, brother? All right, so I just had one question related. Um, when it comes to Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor circumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and, and in all. Um, so I'm not advocating for who gets salvation or not. I'm just reading this precept. And from my understanding, the Scythians come from the Caucasus region, from the Russian steep. So is this relating to Japhites? Is this relating to Israelites who were in that region? Or is it relating to the Edomites who were in that region? And we know yeah. that barbarians typically are of the Caucasian region. Oh, barbaric. Oh, Paul's letter to Colossae. Go ahead, Asai. Yeah, real quick. Let me get a uh, a proof text real quick. Because uh, all, all the Apostle Paul is doing is stratifying social classes and saying regardless of what social class you come from, you are still eligible for salvation. And he does that throughout his epistles. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, using barbarians, too. <sighs> Romans 1 and 14. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, to the wise and to the unwise. So all he's doing is he's he's stratifying stratifying Greeks and barbarians, a, a wise group of people versus an unwise group of people. And he's saying, oh, it doesn't matter if you're smart, dumb, tall, short, poor, rich, fat, skin, what you're eligible for salvation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Greeks are world renowned for philosophy. The barbarians are world renowned for savagery, yeah, that's what wise and unwise. Um, got gotcha. you. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't necessarily advocating. I was just because, from my understanding, I knew that from what I had researched in the past, the Scythians were obviously of a different race or ethnicity mm -hmm. or nationality, rather. Of the yes, so I just want a clarification on that. Con, yes, sir. Oh, All right, thank you. Come on, brother. Shout out right. to brother Matt. Let's try to get uh, 
Let's try to get this so we can. Uh, hey, Israelite Defense, we got a couple minutes. Go ahead, brother. Shalom. Um, I just wanted to Shalom. ask, like, I, I wanted to know where he was getting, like, because they always mention, like, hermeneutics, exegesis. I, I want to know where this is coming from. I wasn't it's able coming, to ask somebody was on here, but I wanted to it, know where it was coming from. It's coming from something called Pet. <clears throat> you ever seen a movie? Stephen King had a movie. It's called Pet Cemetery. <laughs> he gets that terminology and phraseology from pet seminary, right? And, Same and thing. What, what what did he say, Deacon? He mentioned something. He said something about it, it was the prophecy was for then and then for, for later. What what were yeah, the exact words he used? No, that, 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 and Deacon, that was so disastrous when I heard him say it because he said every prophecy has an initial context and a later. He said every prophecy. Yeah, now, and I, I'm, I'm like, like where's, where's that in the Bible? Every time. Every prophecy? Wow. There's some Look, prophecy that took place the next day. And it's just <laughs> in its initial kind of like, literally. And I, I just wanted to uh, also mention another thing, and I'm going to let you brothers go. But in Antioch and in Alexandria, there were schools. Um, uh, I don't know how you pronounce that Catholic word. Catechism? or it was Catechism, yes. Sir. Schools mm -hmm. where they would interpret things, and they would make everything an allegorization. Everything was an allegory. And uh -huh. so there, so if you if you look up like these schools, these different schools that they had that they were interpreting, they're using the exact same methods that they were using back then today, mm -hmm. literally. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's all I wanted to mention. Shalom. I'm about to go over there, switch to the different channel and watch the um, or watch the video y'all are coming out with. All praise. Shalom. 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 Hey, uh, brother, I know you're a Christian. Are you so-called African American? Yep. All right, brother, get out of that white supremacist cult and uh, come back to your law, statutes, and commandments, your heritage as being an Israelite. All right, brother? That's right, like, yeah. Nah, man. Oh, why not? But well, why not? Because, man, because, man, it's not about it's not about the um, seed no more, man. Jesus is the seed, man. Jesus is the seed, man. Jesus is the seed. But hood crucifixion, if it's not about the seed, then how is it about Jesus? Because he's the seed, right? Well, that's what I mean. No more. That's why I said no more. It's not about the seed no but, more. But what makes Jesus who he is? What do you mean? What made Jesus? He was he was in the beginning. What do you mean? What makes Jesus who he is? God's plan makes Jesus who he is. And God's plan was to make him come from whose lineage? Yeah, that's good, David, Joe. Yeah. Okay, so how does it, can it not matter if it's God's plan? You're telling me now God's plan doesn't matter. Bro, I'm telling you that God's plan was to separate Israel from the rest of the world, give them certain laws so that they could purify themselves so that Jesus could be born. The boy, that's what I'm telling you. The boy, so... So you're 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 in Philadelphia, no? Nah, nah, nah. Where where you from? I'm, I'm in. I'm from all over Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, everywhere. Everywhere. Where do you currently reside? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay. When my brothers come up here to Boston, I want to see you on the streets. Come see me. I want. I want to see how much of a real crusader you are. Go ahead and hit that, Deacon. Uh, Isaiah fifty four and three. He said it's not about the seeds. Nah, you are going to before Jesus was born, man. No, 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 no. Hood crusader. Hood crusader. Before Jesus was born, you just got done saying he was in the beginning. Yeah, right. So you going to his prophecy of him coming? You going to the? You going we're to go, prophecy go, of Jesus, bro? Is Jesus God? Yes, sir. We're going to his word then. Go ahead, Deacon. Go ahead. Right, break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. So I need an exegesis on that, Hood Crusader. Thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. You, you, you sure? Yeah. All right. So Jesus, his, the seed, shall inherit the Gentiles, meaning he, he's going to be king over this whole earth, not, not just the Jews. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay, Not just but, the Jews, but, but, but Hood Crusader. It says, "Thy seed." Right. Who is thy seed? God is talking. Somebody's not talking to God. Who is the thy whose seed is inheriting the Gentiles? All right, go up. Re read verse one real quick. Okay, let's read. Go ahead. Okay. Well, let me. You said verse one because verse five is the same audience. And notice he, he said Jesus is God. Verse five, same audience says. All right. Oh, so you just. All right. Real quick. Oh, oh, Hood Crusader, we're answering your question. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know it. 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 Fuck that guy. Man. <laughs> hit the, uh, hit the precept, huh? Okay. I've been three hours and thirty minutes. I'm ready to go. 
we go we go hit this precept. We out of here, y'all. We go go to the main page. We're gonna start a, a live. We're gonna talk about this debate, yesterday's debate, and this whole situation with the sister princess love. Go ahead, aside. It says, For thy maker is thy husband. So uh -huh. if he's saying it's Jesus who's being spoken to, and Jesus is God, that's the reason why he even agreed to let it be read. So this, he's the husband here. Yeah, for thy <laughs> so God, someone made God then. That's uh, what he's saying. Yeah. No, it's talking to Israel. Verse one says, Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst travail with child. Thou that didst travail with child. The Israelites. Thy seed, the seed of the Israelites, not God's seed. The seed of the Israelites are going to inherit the Gentiles. Christianity literally inhibits people's ability to comprehend. Be going over to the main channel. Y'all make sure y'all like Deacon's video. Super chat on your way out. Super thanks on your way out. All praise you. How about Shimmy Shalom. We'll see you on Sakari main channel. Yeah, let's put the Sakari. link. Put the link in the chat. All the moderators, put the link in the chat. We're going over to Sakari main channel to talk about both debates from yesterday and today. All praises, honor, and glory, y'all. Deacon Sakari, we back at it like a crack at it. Better let them bruise in the dome in this wicked industry to shine a light. Oh, they done let them bruise in the dough. Oh, shit. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Uh, uh, they done let them bruise in the dough. Uh, uh, in the dough. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. They done let them bruise in the dough. They done let them bruise in the dough. Look. Joe Biden need to free dark load. The hell is wrong with you? No Alamolek, but I got perfect vision in the dark. I'm a lexicon, I'm a megalodon, all my verses ripping them apart. Mosaic law with the church is missing, it's the worst religion from the start. start. In my soul where the word is written, out of circumcision of the heart. Yeah. I'm rocking my fringes, I'm in Seattle, rocking like Hendrix. No industry gimmicks, you rappers are finished, I'm kicking the door off the hinges. Throwing stones like you sinless till you get the finish. You should have repented and minute this proof is endless. They loving the image, sign out of what happened to Kim. What happened to Kim? I keep my pencil on point, no sharpener. Used to weigh pounds of troll, I lay down the flow like carpenters. Ooh. She causing division in the sisterhood. I'm I'm preparing to wait for the harvester. I'm a harbinger. Cops hop out, we bail on them. Leviticus, I like my fish with scales on them. Ask Chief Ephraim, he could vouch. We be putting in the work while you sitting on the couch. Camp haters quiet as a mouse. Y'all already shout out to my brother, Austin Trout. Just as a reminder, if there's doubt, I would every single friend, even when I'm in the house. Yeah. Get all your truth music at DeaconSakari.com. That's nine albums. We even got a couple free for y'all. Support the cause, y'all. Children's Bibles with black and brown images. All on DeaconSakari.com. Even your head wraps stay dipped, stay brewed, dripping. All right, DeaconSakari.com. And sign up to the Patreon. Sign up to patreon.com slash Deacon Sakari to get the exclusive YouTube videos that YouTube will flag and also early releases as well. And let them bruise in the dome. This wicked industry shine a light. 1592 on the shores of West Africa. We migrated from Israel, but that's where they captured us. Popping purse, popping mollies, and putting powder in your nostrils. We be in the trenches, needles under benches. We be giving them the gospel. I keep 12 Sakari members with me. We be moving like apostles. Truth, some sisters dead traps, hair wraps, but just a thought. No, the church don't even know the truth. They can even tell you you're Israelite. Yeah, and the Arabs selling you all the switches and the malt liquor or the Ishmaelite. Ishmaelite. You can show a nigga slave ships in the Bible, still won't get it right. Until the time's out, then the nigga gotta find out what them missiles like.